Well, we'll see. <laughs> <clears throat> I got these uh, wintergreen. I just found out I'm not a wintergreen fan. <laughs> you want to try a peppermint? I'm, I'll, I'll rock with this for a while. Pepper's better enjoy them while you can. They're going to be gone. They're going to take them away. Are they? Oh, Chuck, yeah. uh, Chuck Schumer wants to. That On motherfucker. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get into that. <laughs> Boom! And welcome to the Big Honker Podcast brought to you by Boss Shot Shells. Come see us. Oh, this will be after the... Never mind, I almost fucked up this whole intro already. (laughs) We're still brought to you by Boss, but this is going to come out after we get back from Tulsa, so don't do you no good to come to Tulsa to see us. Don't come now. No, when you're listening to this, we will not be in Tulsa. (laughs) Yeah, we will be done with Tulsa. Come Squad Fest. We'll be at Squad Fest There you go. In July. But yeah, uh, we were talking before. Chuck Schumer, I'm a a new nicotine advocate. First of all... First of all, guest today, blast from the past, uh, Mr. Eric Lewis, my cousin. He's back. It's been what three years, four years? It's been a while, man. Uh, it was definitely it was pre pre podcast studio. <laughs> we we're sitting at the table I, in the kitchen. I think you were our first out of pocket yeah. yeah. guest in studio that we had. Yeah, I think so. But, well, I'm happy um, to be back. Schumer wants to ban these nicotine pouches because he's saving your life. Because he said too many young teen, too many teens and young adults are getting hooked they're, they're using them but chuck schumer never says anything about going after cigarettes which are which kills more lives than <clears throat> other than because obesity Philip morris writes him a check exactly <clears throat> well so this is something that this is a conversation i actually had a couple days ago and like when you boil it down to 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 the roots get that fucking out of here <laughs> god damn <laughs> it's his first time give him a break Jesus. no when you boil things down like take politics out of it because we live in a world now where politics if if that if it's political there's no give anymore. It's, it's We're fully divided as a country. So yeah. throw that shit out. There are two main trains of thought, and unfortunately they've been correlated to political ideology, but, you know, the conservative traditional viewpoints and then the liberal. With a conservative, I think we all agree, like, I just want to be left alone. Mm-hmm. I want to do what I want to do. I want to chase the American dream that we were all promised. I want to work hard, have a chance to make more money, and the government let me keep more of it than they do. That's... Everybody wants that, that thinks that way. And then there's the the more progressive mindset where it's like, I don't like what you do. When we would say, I don't like what you do, but just, I don't care. Just don't bother me with it. Don't They're get like, to come on my foot. Yeah, exactly. Or, or yeah, anyway, I won't go deeper. <laughs> but, but it's like, if you're a liberal and you don't like what I do, then it's like, no, motherfucker, I want you to change. You mm-hmm. need to be how I am because you're wrong. And that is where, that's where things are so askew. So it's like, I mean, even though, it's a dirty politician there. It's all money based, but it's like something like that. Like, Oh, the teens and all of that. Be better parents. Exactly. That's yeah. the same thing with like the porn stuff that's happened recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No more porn in Texas. No, no. And I mean, I just heard about that from someone else. You know, I, did, <laughs> I don't, I don't know anything about a pop-up page on porno.com, <laughs> but, but no, it's uh, like, I mean, if porn didn't exist, it probably would make, it would save some relationships and shit, maybe. But it's just like anything else. Anything in moderation is not that bad. And like, if if the the whole concern is over minors, that was the whole point of what Texas did. So, so if, for those of you, so you that don't know, I can't talk with this. Um, Texas instituted a law where if you go to a porn site, you have to verify. You don't have to verify. You just got to click yes. Are you over the age of eighteen? Like, there's no. So I, so I, I don't know up, for sure the details. That's what it is. Okay. So like if you, because I read, uh, I read the whole statement from Pornhub and all this other stuff. Um, but just yeah. on the news though, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it, was, yeah. it was on. They they tweeted it out, and I think um, Charlie Kirk. <clears throat> so Charlie Kirk, um, he's a he's a conservative guy, but he was talking if they if if porn sites would just do that and just say very you know are you over the age of eighteen or whatever it is. It drives the um, usage down like sixty percent. Oh wow! Yeah, like it. Just that little barrier is like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm not horny. Really? Anymore. Yeah, like it. It takes a nosedive. 
Oh, and no. I, like all you got to do is click yes, I'm over eighteen because it's like a nicotine site or anything like yeah. that. Oh yeah, just, I'm over eighteen and it lets yeah, you. Yeah, that's in. like I order these nicotine. I order them off of a website. And oh, you do same thing. <clears throat> yeah, like when you go to check out, it's it's like okay, we first you know when you first get on it, you have to say you're over eighteen, mm-hmm. and then when you check out in the cart and you put in your credit card info, you hit pay, and then it says we have to verify your age, and it's like literally type in your birth date, right, and it's done. Yeah, so. I don't know. I don't know all the details from, but it, that may be why. I don't know though. I mean, dropping sixty percent on the click through. I can't remember. I'll I'll try to find it. But it's a it's a staggering number. Just that one little bitty barrier on on what it makes. I just hate how we've gotten to the point where it's like, oh man, too many kids are watching porn, or too many mm-hmm. kids are getting nicotine pouches. So we need to ban it. The government needs to do it. It's like, no, they're your fucking kid. You're the one that gave a six-year-old a cell phone and turned them loose on the world with no restrictions. Yeah. Like, monitor what... I mean, me and you've laughed about the stories before on a previous podcast when what we used to have to do to try to see a booby on the internet. I got caught the first fucking try. <laughs> Mom and dad got home. I didn't know about clearing the history yet, yeah, and I was history. acting funny, so they knew what was going on. <laughs> and they were coming back from church, what made it worse. <laughs> He's got his lion face on, Missy. <laughs> see what that boy was doing at that computer. Oh, I was not a good liar, apparently. <laughs> Jeff and I talked about this a couple weeks ago. Did you know that pornography is what drove the development of the internet? Yes. And it's also like what's determined uh, which format is dominant Yeah, on like, what was it? Uh, back in the VHS day, it was VHS and like, was it Betamax or something like that? Probably. Jeff would probably be able to tell you. Yeah, he would. He's the elder of the room, mm-hmm. but he, he had to take a call, I guess. <laughs> yeah. fucking. So, <laughs> but no, um, and then same thing with like HD DVD and Blu-ray and then camcorders, VCRs and cable tele and wasn't the first thing it. that a paywall was used for on the internet pornography. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure it was the first. Actually, you know what? There might be a movie that was about that. I don't know. Zach and Mary make a porno. No, not that. <laughs> it was like, uh, I think it has, um, not Owen Wilson, his brother, Luke Wilson, Luke Wilson. It has Luke Wilson in it. And he's like, yeah, anyway, I'm not going to butcher the synopsis of it. Look it up. Just go to IMDb. <laughs> um, yeah, we looked up the numbers of exactly what it did. Um, I've got the article, if I can find the numbers now, um, <clears throat> of the porn driving the development of the internet. Jeff was like, oh, no, bullshit. That, that can't be case. Like, yeah, motherfucker, that's all, that's, all, that's all it was good for. Bottom line, we're all animals, so. Exactly right. <laughs> um... Demand for higher quality porn drove demand for faster internet. I can move it over here so that we can both butcher this together. Uh, Let's see. Once technology became faster, familiar. Maybe this wasn't it. Oh, okay. There it is. Uh, People who put in the work to make the internet go in the early days often did so because the reward was pornography. First text, then images, then video. Pornography created the demand for internet access and also created the demand for higher speeds, more reliable connection, and better interfaces. Many estimates suggest that sexual content represented as much as 80% of traffic on the pre-World Wide Web internet. (laughs) 80%. Wow. Like, that's all they got on the internet to do, was to jerk off. People 80, are horny. 80%. <laughs> We're talking about how... Um, oh, that was a good time to walk in on. Had a <laughs> Deer hunting call from Florida. Nice oh. guy. Real nice guy. He's, he listens to the podcast all the time. Oh, okay. So, well, Richard, I was just talking ta- to you. We won't talk too much shit. Then. Yeah. yeah, we're <laughs> talking about how porn drove... Because uh, Pornhub... They recent- canceled in Texas. I saw that. So, all it is, is, is Texas requires you to ver- put in, are you over the age of 21, before you can go to the site. And Pornhub just said, fuck it. We're not doing it at all. So you have to be 21 to watch porn or 18, 18, whatever it is. I, I don't know. Yeah, it was 18 because the, their argument is they're trying to protect minors. And like, like we were just talking about, it's like, be better fucking parents. Like, pay attention to what your kids are doing. Like, And I mean, all honesty, dude, I, we we hid behind the field in, at Jimmy Ray's house outside of town in high school. And Jimmy Jr. would steal porno mags so that we could see some torn out shitty pictures. <laughs> Like I mean, it's just so Jimmy Ray had porns. So what here's what uh, I may or may not have. I think somebody else may have stashed them back there. <laughs> Jimmy there Ray will in trouble now. Yeah. <laughs> so go to Pornhub. Then what does it say when you go to Pornhub? Uh, dear, dear user, as many as you know, your elected officials in Texas are requiring us to verify your age before allowing access to our website. Not only does this infringe on the rights of adults to access protected speech. That's interesting. Work, yeah, that's it? a good, good, good uh, twist on showing your tits and ass. But the, the state of Texas. 
I'm with them on this and I'm against them on this. I'm with them on the fact that we need to protect kids. There's no doubt about it. But like Eric said, you're removing the responsibility of being just like these nicotine pouches. Just be a good fucking parent. No, no, I understand that. But the, pro- the problem is... Spend more is, time with your kid. Okay, you got a nine-year-old son. <laughs> yes. He's going to start taking long showers in about three years. 100%. <laughs> and when he does, that's that's just human nature. That's that just, is. That's what's going to happen. what it is. Oh, I know. But at, tw- at, at 12 years old, you're going to be watching his phone. Because he's going to probably have a phone at 12 to 14 years of age. He's okay. going to. And you're going to start watching his phone. But well, when he's 16 I, you, I think years you can, old... You can restrict what they can get on. Right. But at 16 years old, what are you going to do? I mean... Just like I said earlier, just don't get come on my feet. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's part of it. There don't use be, the towels, the good right, towels. Yeah, just toilet paper like a regular. You show person. me, you show me a grown man above the age of eighteen years old that hadn't seen something porno type in a year, and I'll show you a liar or a psycho. Yeah, mm. it's just. I mean, I'm telling you, if I see some titties on something, I'm gonna look at it. I can't help it. I'm watching a series on Netflix right now, and Michelle calls it a porno. It's the power. Have you seen it? Uh uh-uh. uh It's uh. 50 cents in it. He wrote the thing. He's really? in it too. It's really good. It's about a black drug dealer with the, and he partners with a white guy. And I enjoy that kind of shit. Yeah. It's in modern age Sopranos with with the black gang kind of, not a gang, just the drug dealers big time. Right. But they have a lot of titties in there. Uh, a lot of titties in there. They know how to keep I don't ever viewer. turn it off when they come on. <clears throat> no. Who, but, you know, I like Shameless too. I didn't like seeing all the homosexual crap. But, oh, but, that, like was that, a, but that was a great series. Right. But that's just part of life. You know, I'm it not going to turn it off. We just started one called The Gentleman. Oh, that's, oh good. that's good. I haven't seen any titties yet. Did There's you, no titties in the damn, whole thing. Damn, I got to watch eight but episodes. It, but you watched all of it, Jeff? I watched the whole thing. Oh. Very, very good. Did you ever watch the movie? No, I have not. Got to watch I the movie. I was so proud of Michelle. I told Michelle, I said, that guy reminds me of that guy off of Breaking Bad, Andy. That's because that's the same guy. <laughs> like, well, that's why he reminded me is, of him. Then. Is the, the movie the one that has uh, uh, Matthew McConaughey in it? Okay. Yeah. It is a great series. Very good. Guy Ritchie does a great job. We're on a new series now, The Resident. It, what's I it highly on? recommend it. It's on Netflix. Okay. Highly, highly recommend it. It is a hospital series with the young guy that got out of the Army, and he's a, a third-year resident at a hospital in Atlanta. It is a very good, because they've got some some bad villains in there, oh. really. But it shows a lot of light on the fucked up system that today's medical system, that the insurance, the lack of care, if you don't have the right insurance, yep. uh, they touch on a lot of shit that is true. Doctors over, uh, charging people, doctors making you take chemo that don't need it. I mean, they oh, go through no a, shit. it's really, really good from that standpoint. And it's anti-government in a lot of ways. Cause it shows how fucked up it is. But then again, how fair is it for someone that works to not be able to get health service because you sit on your ass all day, you get free shit. And that's yeah. one of the, I have a real problem with that. I do too. It's <clears throat> I, I can't mean, afford good health care. No. And I mean that's the hell, you know, like y'all know our our youngest baby, Aubrey, she was born with a uh, the nerve on her eye, instead of there being one one nerve going to each muscle of the eye, there's one that splits at wise. So her eye can only move a little bit because it's firing both of those muscles, so they're fighting themselves. And her eye was crooked. Well, with a little girl, you don't want a little girl getting made fun of for a crooked eye. So no, because assholes like Jeff would be in the classroom. Oh, I know. Say I know. I was. I was one of those assholes <laughs> too. That's why I'm like, hell no, we're fucking fixing this. We have Christian healthcare ministries. It's actually kind of funny that I just dropped f bomb right after saying Christian healthcare ministries, but God right knows. before it. But God knows. He knows. He knows what's up. He forgives and forgets. He does. So, um, it, it's affordable for a family. Like I think we pay. 700 bucks a month still a shitload of money mm-hmm. but it covered it covers everything but the issue with it is it's a, a medical sharing like cost sharing plan so we go on for this surgery i'm out of pocket fifteen thousand bucks until i get reimbursed 120 days later and that's tough because we've done two of these surgeries now and right when i got reimbursed for the first one it was like oh well here <laughs> here's that back and now we're gonna probably have to have a third one we're in that lucky low percentage but it's just it's something like that like you're saying, if you don't have the right insurance or, or the right means of paying for it, that she would just live with it. And mm-hmm. her eye would have been pointed straight in her whole life. What, it, what about an eye transplant? Will that help? Uh, I, I, I'm, I know y'all have asked every no, question. I'm just curious because... It's because it's not the actual... Like, her vision is perfect It's in a it. nerve deal. It's nerves, and we're not there medically to, to reroute and grow new nerves in that type that, of capacity. But let's go back now 50 years. 50 years ago, she would have just... Oh, you'd have lived with it. Wandering eye or whatever they mm-hmm. call that. So and, she, that's amazing where medicine is Oh, coming. it is. It's advanced. And from what he... Like, we had to do an eye patch over her fully functioning eye 
to because they said that our bodies through nature, like the brain will start to weaken the signals from whatever's interfering with the good, like automatically. So if some someone that has like, I mean, we've all known people that have wandering eyes, they call it strab strabismus or something like that, that never get it fixed. They're, and you always, I've always wondered, like, do they just see two things? Just like, what the fuck? Like, <clears throat> how's that work? Or do they see more? Uh, the brain during like the early years of life just starts weakening it. So that eye acts more as like a peripheral vision right. than it does the primary focus like it does when we both, you know, when you look with both eyes. So, I mean, I guess our bodies are made to adapt and overcome through anything. But mm -hmm. with if we can go the medical route and straighten that sucker out, we're going to. yeah. <laughs> there used to be a light. percent I was wrong. I said 60. It's actually 80%. Or another scene, eighty percent decrease in traffic since uh, the age verification was required in wow. states of like, a lot less Louisiana. masturbation in Louisiana now. Yeah, I can tell you that uh, everybody's hair trigger there. Yeah, <laughs> back to that wonder and eye stuff. There was a lady that used to work in town, and she, she was a waitress, a really nice lady, but she had that eye, the wonder and eye. And I'll never forget we're ordering one time, and I'm sitting there and waiting. The show goes, Jeff, she's want your order. I was like, oh. <laughs> I didn't thought, know who she was looking at. She was checking the ceiling fan. <laughs> I thought, you know, I was like, <laughs> Michelle kicks me under the table. You can't say that. Was fucking, I didn't. I did because I, I said, well, I didn't yes. know who she was looking at. Uh, well, you never had the the <laughs> thickest of filters. So. No, but I felt bad because I wasn't trying to be rude. It just caught me off guard. Jeff, oh, I, I didn't know she's looking at me. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, I thought she was looking at that table over there. <laughs> You're like, what? What is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You start looking behind. Is You're like, guy, is somebody coming in? Is the guy in the Adam Sandler movies? Is that his real eye or is that just a? I I think, I think he can. Fake. I think he can just do that with. Oh his really? Eyes. Steve Buscemi. <laughs> What's his no. name? No, not Steve Buscemi. The one that's in Waterboy yeah. and all the. Oh yeah. yeah. He's like. <laughs> he's in the. He's in the. Oh, new, he's yeah, in that yeah, movie, yeah, that yeah. new show they have. Uh, the wrong Missy. Oh yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. That's a funny fucking. Show. Have you seen it, Andy? Oh, it was, God, it's it was crazy. Worm worthy at first because it's what <laughs> a what a terrible situation. <laughs> That bitch is crazy. Yeah, he is. My boyfriend will whip your ass. No, he won't. No, he won't. No, he won't. <laughs> David Spade against, uh, what's the big guy that plays Aquaman? That's who the dude looked like. J Jason, Jason Momoa. Momoa. <laughs> That's how big that motherfucker was. <laughs> David Spade. He'll whip your ass. No, he won't. No, he won't. <laughs> no, no. Leave me out of this. This <laughs> yeah, is your fight. Yeah. So is Adam even in, is he no. in this? It's just his buddies? No. That's yeah. his wife. I did not realize that. That the, plays the Barracuda. That's Adam Sandler's wife, someone said. Yeah, she's in. She has a cameo cameo in almost every movie. Well, she that plays he does. a pretty good role in that movie, though. Yeah, I, I can't remember. I have to go. I don't know if I want to go back and watch it or not. It gave me anxiety through the first, <laughs> even though I'm married. It's like <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. The wrong though. Missy. That was the funniest fucking show. <laughs> it's a movie or a show? It's a movie. It's oh, it is one of the Adam Sandler. Yeah, does. you remember when they did that big run where he was pumping out one every three or four months? On yeah. I think that was during COVID time, yeah. like 2020 to one. Somewhere I bet he got there. a ten movie deal. He did. You already looked it up. Oh, did I? But mom tells me she goes, "I found a movie we're going to watch together." She goes, "I watched the first five minutes of it," and she goes, oh, "We got to. I got to watch this with Jeff." And I did. I cried. I laughed so hard. Oh, and that was it. Yeah, the last fifteen <laughs> minutes was kind of boring, but the first part of it was really. It was when he figures out he actually likes her. It's like, oh, this shit. Yeah, sucks. it fucking sucked. Then <laughs> turn her back into a because chick was a hottie. Oh man, I'd have, mm -hmm. I'd have probably still gone to the other one. Oh, I would have too. I'm shallow <laughs> like a gene pool. Uh -huh. Did you watch Reacher? On Amazon Prime? I watched a few episodes of it, and then I got busy and never got back on it. But the way we were. Thad, I'm pretty sure he's got something more than creatine and I never protein seen going show. on. Reacher was good. Um, he said... It's got, now, it's got the guy that was in Blue Mountain State. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this the guy that was the was going to print jail or something, and he and the, the first movie, and he beats the shit out of everybody that drives like a muscle car, like an old Mustang or something? Yeah, I think that so. was So, Tom, they did movies. They did two movies called Jack Reacher. But that's that was one of those, and right? And then they did a spinoff series okay. with a different actor. And, I mean, I guess it did pretty well. They keep doing... It's an Amazon one, isn't it? Yeah. He said the first season that there was no... It was just hard work, but he said the second season... I knew I had to get bigger, so he's like, "I got to cheat." He's, he's a yeah, he's a oh, he admitted it. Yeah, because he's yeah. <clears throat> he said he's second, a big son of a bitch. Second season, he was supplementing. <laughs> <laughs> Have you watched any of the Jack Ryan series? Yes, the black guy that's in there that's in the Wire. Yes, he's a great actor. He always plays really good roles. Which one? The the I, he plays in the Wire. He's the black oh. uh, the black detective that drinks a lot. That's an alcoholic basically, and then he's he's in Jack Ryan. He's like the special operations director for the CIA. Always plays really good roles. There was another good one called Night Agent that we started watching. Same thing. We started Night Agent and Reacher about the same time. Hadn't finished either fucking one. No. I think we're victims now of 
of too much too variety. Too fucking much. Yeah, but then, but then we'll, it'll take me a month to find another good series because before we found The Gentleman, before we found, I found Power that I like, and me and Michelle found The, the Resident. Yeah. She, she'll watch some chick flicks, but we had a hard time. I'd watch one or two, and I was like, I can't watch this shit. When it seems like it goes in phases, like when something good comes out, yeah. there's like three other things. Yeah. Yes. And you got to pick one. And if you try to start mixing them, you start like combining all of the shit that's in them. And then, or, but like, how many times have y'all, I'm sure you've done the same thing. You sit on the couch for an hour and look at 150 options that would all be decent watches. Mm-hmm. And you're like, nope, nope, no. Nope. Then after it, you finally pick something, and then ten minutes in, you're just on your phone. On your phone. Yeah, that's, it's hard to find anything. We go from September to January. We don't watch any kind of. St- we watch sports. That's oh it. right, because you're on time to season, get into Once it. hunting season's over, me and Michelle watch deals. And COVID, I found Downton Abbey that we were really, really, really liked. But I like history stuff. But it's so hard to find a series oh, that I, I like. And fucking drug cartels fucked up my favorite stuff with the Narcos Mexico. Oh yeah, they killed a couple of guys. Oh, over, is that why they stopped yeah, doing they it? Yeah, were, they were recruiting places. They, they had a job, and their job was to find these places to film Narcos Mexico. And they killed some of like, the production killed team? a couple of them, and they fucking that's the end of that shit. What and that's the why, fuck? That's why Narcos Mexico, because that was the number one show on Netflix Dude, for a long I time. Love, oh, and, I love yeah, those. And they haven't done any in a, and at a while. That's I really why, like the that's original, like, too, like oh. going with the, you know hunting Pablo down yes. and stuff. It's so good. Those are great shows, but... That's why I like that power because it's a drug show, but Narcos Mexico was by far my favorite of any of them. Yeah, I mean I love I love that, but I'm gonna tell you what people are scared to death of El Chapo because when we were at Isla Mujeres, there's a house that he started building there, and we finally got a guy to tell us that. But we asked him, like, no, 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 never heard of Paul. I never no. heard of that guy. Are you never, serious? They didn't never want to heard talk of El Chapo. That's a cool place to go to. So, but it's, very safe. it's so programmed into him. Like, they don't want to talk about it. Don't know that guy. They didn't want to. I mean, like we were at a. We stopped at a. Me, Tony, Michelle, and Chance stopped at a, on the side of the road, fucking place to buy a frozen coconut shit or something. <laughs> and we were looking for that. That's what we we're doing. We we're in the golf cart, and I'm like, "Hey, where's uh, El Chapo's place at?" And that guy's like, looked down and started doing some shit. Went from just this festive, nice Mexican guy to didn't want to fucking speak at all. Like he's been interrogated. Yeah. And then Tony's like, uh, yeah, where's that place? Like, I don't think he wants to talk about it, Tony. <laughs> read the room. Tony did not read the room at all. <laughs> read the room. <laughs> no, he's going to tell me. Yeah. I just have to ask twice. It's like the music stopped and everything. <laughs> <laughs> no. Three big guys standing there with yeah. their arms crossed. Right. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But you could obviously tell that it was not something he wanted to speak about. But then when we were riding our boat back to the mainland, the last day we were, when we were going home, I asked the guy and he's like, oh yeah, it's, you know, it's, Started it and they never finished. Got a bunch and of nobody graffiti. will touch it. Like Mm-mm. it's his. They don't fuck with him. Yeah, is he still alive? Yep, in New York prison. Oh really? Right. Oh, I'm sure he's got cell phone access, yeah. internet, everything he him, needs. Him and Jeffrey Epstein are probably fucking middle of somewhere on an island banging <laughs> fucking chicks. I mean, Fourteen year olds. There's nothing would surprise me at all on all of that shit goes down. I watched uh, Capone. I tried to watch it with Tom Hardy. It was is that the one where in Miami and you get shot in the backyard. I don't know. I didn't finish it. It was not bad. The same way. I, it lost but like me. he lost his mind because he had syphilis. Bad. And syphilis can make you lose your mind. Apparently so. It did Capone. Yep. Pussy kills. But yep. that's why that's why they let him <laughs> yeah. out. That's why they let him out of Alcatraz because they're like, he's just not going to live. So like, just fuck it. Let him go be. Uh, he was always under surveillance in Miami, but it was trying to portray like how his mind was in the last couple of years. And it just lost me. Yeah, yeah. It was, He was totally fucked. It was a fucked up show. I didn't God. like it either. And most of those shows I like. Yeah, I don't know about you, Andy, but every time I hear the word syphilis, I mm-hmm. almost have to say it with a lisp. R.I.P. David Gordon. <laughs> so <laughs> our, our, sex, sex our sex ed teacher, Region 9, David Gordon. He's he dead? Come. Syphilis. Yeah. Yeah, he passed <laughs> yeah. away. He, he said syphilis? Syphilis. Oh, he had a terrible lisp, and he <laughs> he highly he heavily preferred the use of words with S's in them. Yeah. So it's STDs, STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, mm-hmm. and then they start showing you like nothing but the nastiest <clears throat> dick and puss on the screen. We were all terrified of of women after that shit. I never, we never <laughs> had that when I was in school. Oh, we got fully briefed you on the worst it, case scenario. You had to learn it yourself. Drainage <laughs> ditches, someone's backyard, a clubhouse. That's where you learned shit. <laughs> well, there were some drainage ditches, but it wasn't what you're thinking. Yeah, about. we didn't we didn't learn it the way y'all did. <laughs> no, Fifth was, and sixth grade, it was fairly PG. Like you know, you got the drawings and the the little map or whatever yeah. and little unintimidating cartoon yeah, wieners you know yeah. <laughs> and then like seventh and eighth grade come and like you gotta say you got they send the waiver home for the parents and it's uh, it was hardcore warts and oozes. yeah there was and, never in my life ever had to never had oh that class. man they, they showed this one picture one year 
of uh, some dude's some poor motherfucker's <laughs> dick. And there were so many warts piled up on the end, I don't even know how he would piss. Mm. I mean, it's like mm. he just, it was terrible. It looked like a, a dirt dauber started building a nest on the end of his dick. Mm. <laughs> there was a, I saw a TikTok. It's I bet I can terrible. find it. I'll never, I mean, it's stuck in if here, you dude. you can remember it now, yeah. It's stuck. That's when the blue waffle deal got real popular. It didn't even shock me. I was like, oh, they showed us that. It seemed way worse. Fucking in the 90s. Ain't it weird, though, you can remember something from school? I remember when I was in second grade, I think, they had an eclipse. Mm -hmm. Like we're having now, and we had to use the old box with the 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 cardboard box with a hole in it and you could see on it. And it's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember that. Oh, yeah, because it was a big deal. Yeah. Hey, did you see, you know, the the clips is Nick, in two weeks. We're going to go, me and Michelle, the boys, Andy and the boys, we're going to go to Dallas to look at it. Yeah, Last, in that's five, like we, dead center yes, of the... Five yeah. years ago, me and Michelle went to Kansas. The clips was going to be the next day and it's like four o'clock in the afternoon. Ollie was a puppy and I told Michelle, I said, we ought to go see the clips. Never seen it in my life. It's in the middle of Kansas. She goes, okay, let's go. Dad was alive still, and he was at the lodge. I said, hey, can Ollie stay with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all going to do this. We're going to Eclipse. No shit, where are you going? I said, Kansas, where my dad was from. Well, if you go by Buffalo, goes well. I said, I'm not doing that. I'm going to go to Eclipse. <laughs> we drove, and I looked on the map, and we were at 95%, and we pulled over at this wildlife refuge there and got our lawn chairs out and sat down, and people were driving by kind of looking at us and shit. But on the highway, they had signs, Eclipse, blah, 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 watch out for traffic, don't stop, and I kept thinking we're going to be ninety five percent. So I'm thinking we're going to see ninety five percent of the sun covered. It's going to get dark. Yeah. My whole goal was to see lightning bugs. I want to go up north where they had lightning bugs to see them during the middle of the day. I thought that's my goal. That's what's going to be so excited. We were fifteen miles short. We might as well stay to fucking Knox. No way. The sun never changed for us. No just way. Kind of kind of got could a little. Just see it you get just, weird. It, yeah, and that was it. But if I'd have drove fifteen like more we had, miles, we had that here yes. a month or so ago. Do you see how the Do you see how the reflections and shadows changed? Weird. They were all arched. Arched. Yeah. So. So I called back here, and Tony's like, well, how was that? I go, it's fucking disappointing. <laughs> you know, I was like, fuck. He said, they were working outside doing some work at the lodge. And he's like, yeah, you could tell, you know, with the, through a welder's mask, you could see it. I said, it was fucking sucked. <laughs> so <laughs> Could have done that with you. Yes. I said, so I learned my lesson, and I told Michelle, I looked it up, and I said, there's going to be another one coming up this year. I said, well, we're going to be at 100%, so we're going to go to 100%. But I saw a deal yesterday. I think people are fucking really what going overboard on this. Fred, my buddy Fred, works at a sawmill in eastern Oklahoma. They're shutting down for two days because of the clips. Two well, fucking days. Sarah Huckabee called in the National Guard. What the fuck is going on? It's going to get I dark for an hour. I saw some shit, too. Where like, and I'm not saying I subscribe to this. It's just like the conspiracies are... Yeah. Oh, they're way, nobody like, trusts the government anyway. No, and I saw like this deal where all of the, the 100% pathways are, and they yeah. make some like ancient... Letters from Sign. biblical times yeah. that's for the end of times, like, mm -hmm. it's like so we're going from hey everybody go outside and wear these special glasses you can get on Amazon too. The end is here. That's mm -hmm. what they did in the fucking day of the Mayans. Yeah, yeah. they're like, going we're back to that. Right, the nineteen ninety nine the calendar. Oh, we're going to two thousand, we're going to die. But they're having. I just saw today that ERCOT, who's our Texas utility, yeah, fuck up dudes. They're telling <laughs> they're people good at that. they're telling people to be prepared for some massive outages and stuff. Mm -hmm. They said, and you want to go to Dallas? They said this. So, well, we're going to have fucking gas, full gas a tank. We can drive home. Fucking a car ain't going to go out. They say it's going to cause the. There are going to be some power outages, and I'm like, what the fuck? And then one guy made a really good good point though on that. Everybody that relies on solar energy for anything, it's going to fuck up the yeah. system for four or five hours because it's not going to be full radiant sun for a while. But God dang, we have cloudy fucking days exactly. and snowstorms that right. still works. Exactly. I can tell you what's not going to problem with if you have natural gas or coal, it's all going to work fine. But if you use on wind, if it's a day with no wind and this eclipse, they're really worried about it. But I think they're telling people to watch your animals too. Like they think the animals are all going to start freaking out. Oh, like, it's fucking weird. It's like we've had a ton of these. This isn't some crazy thing. Yeah, like, what's their difference between four years ago? There wasn't no fucking nothing went out anywhere. Nah, I think they're, they're saying just, it's the it's the count. Like we've had so we've had it's like whatever i'm once again i'm not subscribing to this it's just like when jeff backs me into a corner about the democrats it's just i don't subscribe to it i just know that this is some of the information out there they're saying that this has been a series and that this is the last of the series and that's when shit hits the fan this or comes uh, out next monday don't it uh, yeah what that's, is what day is april 8th is the yeah so it's so two we, weeks away two, so yeah. this will be out before then 
I think people are making a big much of a do. I think that's gonna, but the sun's gonna go out for an hour yep. or thirty minutes or whatever it is. People are gonna fucking get in their car. I'm telling you what we're gonna do. We're gonna drive to the Metroplex, have lunch somewhere, go sit in a parking lot, watch fucking go dark, watch the street lights come on like a bunch of rednecks. Yeah, turn around, get in the car, and go back home so we can get <laughs> home. That's what we're gonna do. Yep. I just don't see that they're talking about. Uh, Chance had put on a deal that they're expecting three or Fred and where he lives at in Eastern, they're expecting 300,000 people to drive there to see this chance says, well, it's going to bog down. The cell service won't work and stuff like that. Why? Because too many people too many are, in people are going to be in one spot that aren't used to be in there. Yeah. But I mean, it does that like at trade shows, your cell right. service goes to shit. Cause there's so many people. Oh, that's, I don't know. Every it is <clears throat> COVID fucked up a lot of shit, but it, exponentially increased the amount of people that don't trust anything anymore. No, no anything. I, I, not not medical professionals, not the government. But And, I mean, all our redneck asses are like, yeah, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the club. We, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah nothing new God, here. Damn. Now, the, the medical deal, that was kind of new, I think, for everybody. We've all had bitches with bad doctors and, you know, oh, this guy did this wrong shit and it cost me money. But then when you get everybody blatantly lying and covering up something like COVID and its severity... Not undermining the ones who died from it. People die from the flu every fucking year, too. And, and I mean, we're not. If people wouldn't have died of COVID if they wouldn't have put them on ventilators and no. used that medicine. And there I, there I would have been one some that would have died. There's no doubt. I heard one where, like, only a month after, like, doctors in the Wuhan area where it all freaking started, they tried ventilators and they scrapped it. They were like, no, this is this is burning their lungs. Everybody that's. The, everybody that lost a loved one, I feel sorry for them. Absolutely. Feel. But we all know someone that died of COVID. But. If they wouldn't use ventilators and stuff, why are people not dying of COVID today? I mean, it's the same fucking deal yeah. that it was before. Yeah. I mean, it would be a little different strain, but people aren't dying from it nope. anymore. And that's that's the whole, we just got axed from being on YouTube now for sure. <laughs> but but uh, that, yeah, this whole the so this, this, this <laughs> eclipse thing is just fucking crazy. I think the sun's going to melt away for an hour. It's not going to melt. It's going to be blocked for an hour. And yeah. then... And the, and it's the, all going to come back to normal. It'll just be an eerie colored sky. Mm -hmm. For for most of the people in it, it's not even going to go fully out. Just where you're at 100. Yeah. Then, and could, then you'll just see, it's like, man, it, it feels eerie. Like it does. It feels eerie. Like the, the hue of the light changes. And it's like, what the fuck? This is weird. Of course, with technology and information, now we know it's coming. So it's not as... Freaky as if you were say. walking you in the forest and that shit. 300 years ago, oh, yeah. and it's like, what the? You'd go to your pyramid fuck? and start chopping heads off. That's yeah. what they did. Who didn't pay the light bill? <laughs> yeah. Or but, if you were like jerking it and you're like, all oh, the fucking sun goes out, you're like, son of a bitch. They always said I'd go blind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tied that right back in. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now. If you go 98%, you're going to be fucking disappointed 100%. So it, it's you got to be 100 Yeah. And I never would have thought that. I was, no. like, I was so proud of myself. I was like, we're at 95%, Michelle. Close this is going to be great. Just yeah. like, fuck it, good yeah, enough. Nobody's good. here. We're sitting by there. People are driving by like, what the fuck are these jackasses from Texas doing sitting here at this parking lot? There's nobody else at. We're just sitting there like tourists yeah. waving to people We've got the whole shit. place to ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. There ain't nobody else. I figured this is going to be We're beating the crowd. And we're, we're, we're just set up uh, over here by the fence. We were listening to... Uh, <laughs> The highway, a Nash. I'll never forget the guys in Nashville that does the thing that mom and them wanted to go to. That whatever the fuck it is, and uh, on the radio, and they were live from Nashville because it went through Nashville, went to Kansas City to Nashville. We're fucking forty miles from Kansas City. Yeah, and there, and all of a sudden in Nashville, oh, the sides are getting dark now. I'm like, motherfucker. Michelle goes, when's it gonna happen here? I'm like, <laughs> geography's telling me that we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I said, well, we're at Kansas City. This is we're south of Kansas City. Nashville is five hundred miles southeast of here now, and it's dark there. The moon, the sun is going that way. So oh, we're fucked. Yeah, let's just go home. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I don't think this is gonna happen, Michelle. For us, I think we're screwed. Yeah, but there, you're gonna be able to see it really good here too, though. It's like ninety percent here. You ain't gonna see shit. Well, I mean, it's gonna get. Yeah, okay, I'll be out there with my welding hood. Yeah, yeah, we're going, we're going, we're gonna go to hundred percent. And the, and I looked it up again. I thought, well, when's the next one gonna be? Twenty forty four. No way. And the one in 2044 is going to like go from Seattle to Bismarck, North Dakota, and kind of makes a circle up that way. Oh, it's so not what, even, it won't be shit here. In this my lifetime, time. this is my last time in my life, unless I live to be Moses' age or something, that I'll see one. That is weird, though, because they've <laughs> been so frequent lately. Yep. I guess you just... What they're saying? Yep. It's all part of the signs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they uh, Four horsemen. Speaking of living forever, they said that there's somebody on Earth right now that will live forever. They will They will have figured it, They will have figured immortality out. You no. Think? Yep, they said, because you're going to take a baby, and it's just like anything. You're going to figure out some anti-aging whatever, and it's going to work so-so. But then they're going to get to be like 50, 
And in that 50 years, they're going to have exponentially figured out the immortality solution. And they said, there is somebody on earth right now that's going to live forever. I I wouldn't want to live forever. Fuck no. no. I've already lost so many friends and people that I love in my life that I'm used... You but know? I mean, if you lived forever, then nothing would be special. Mm-mm. You think about like all like y'all. You've been traveling a lot lately, doing the and like you're saying, you're like checking stuff off. Like I'm gonna go see this at 100. percent You wouldn't even fucking go. Mm-mm. Yeah, 100 years from now, am I asking to have to go to Antarctica, Tierra del Fuego, or some shit? Yeah, but then you been see everywhere. that, and then what's left? Like, yeah, I, now, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's now. Am I gonna <laughs> live forever and be 35? Because my old worn out ass now. Oh yeah. I mean, I can tell you when you know when you're old is when you see a, a, a young lady that's 20 to 25 and you don't really notice them no more because you know that you're too old to even <laughs> look at that. And then you see a lady that's 65 and you thought, well, she's a really good looking lady. Yeah. She's held herself <laughs> yeah. together well. That's, yeah. when, that's when you know you're fucking old. Uh, and so I can't imagine being 165. I'm, I'm already doing that, like seeing seeing women in their 40s, like, damn, she still looks good. That, that's right. <laughs> okay. Be 56 and you see that. You're yeah. looking at women who are 65. 65 is fucking an old, old woman. There's a time that fucking make you throw up. I know it. And you thought, well, she's pretty good yeah, looking for like, 65. Yeah, I'm take it for a spin. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You don't, yeah. It used to be a 20, 25-year-old. Now you're like, eh, that's not even my ballpark, you no, know? No, oh, that's the way. I, I wonder like, what her grandma looks like. I, I haven't gone, like, to party bars in a long time just because I, I figured out I was old about five or six years ago, and I'd rather go sit at a quiet bar where I can mm-hmm. talk Yes. instead of being shoulder-to-shoulder shoulder crammed into somewhere like a dueling piano bar or something. Anyway, um, last one of the last times I went out to a, a more like a bar scene we would have gone to college, go up to get a beer on... Eleven dollar beer night, you know, and see those eighteen, nineteen, twenty year old girls that you used to chase in college, and it's like they're kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was yeah. when I knew it was like we have one of them that works for us part time. I'm not gonna say her name because anyway, she goes to the bar all the time, and she was telling me, I said, "Do you get old men hit on you all the time?" Oh yeah, I'll let them buy me beer. <laughs> God, they figured the game. Out. I mean, whatever. <laughs> that, taking donations. Just they want to buy me a drink. I'll let them. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I don't blame you. I know, yeah, save money. But Shit, eco- economy's tough right now. Here's expensive. You, you said what's best though. You said you don't want to go where it's loud and you can't hear. Yep. I've been there a long time. Your aunt though, she don't she mind. Still it. thinks she needs to go somewhere. Where fucking lungs oh, are going to go thumping in the music. I hate that. And I used your cousin here as an example the other day. We were. We're probably in Nashville or somewhere. Mom, Michelle goes, well, let's go to this place. I guess it's fucking too loud yeah. there. She goes, Jeff, we don't get to go do this much. What fucking life? We go all the fucking time. We <laughs> yeah. go places all, you know, yeah. go clubbing, we go somewhere though. twice a week. Well, no, we don't go clubbing, but we go somewhere. Right. We, we, go we go on a trip at least once a month, and we go to town to a big city at least twice a week. We go places all the fucking time. Yeah. Go I, go, I said, listen, <laughs> I said, <laughs> your <laughs> fucking son don't want to go that shit. He just told me he can't stand to go there. It's just too fucking loud. He didn't say that. I said, yes, he did. Said, we didn't talk about it on our podcast. <laughs> I thought my lungs were going to get knocked loose. Yeah. We, were in, we were in Nashville. Beer's $10 a pop. And you got to, if you don't got tits, you're here. You got to wait. You're here the whole, oh yeah, 100%. Getting to the pisser was a fucking act of Congress. You're wading <laughs> through people. You're getting drinks spilled all over you because people are drunk and fucking doing this number. It was miserable. Yeah. Couldn't talk to anybody. So, like, I'm just standing there with my beer in my hand, like, looking at my watch, like, when the fuck can we go back to the <laughs> And then room? someone brings shots to the table. Oh. Like, I ain't, I'm down. <laughs> no. I'm done on shots. That fucking long time ago. Oh, uh, that's asking for it. They don't I'll, even do I'll, shots I'll do like a shot I had. if I get beer pressured into it. But that, <laughs> like, that college, like, yeah. I got the next round. It's quarter Jaeger bomb night. That's, yeah. I and, and it's not just that either, but it's also, you know, combined with, a hangover doesn't last six hours anymore. It's a one to two day sentence. And even after you don't feel sick from drinking too much, you don't sleep where the shit. Mm-hmm. It, it's, I mean, it's shocking how fast you get old. <laughs> yeah, it does. It and just I, happens. I, I was, can't remember the last r- really, really bad hangover that I had, but I know the last time I thought, I thought death's got to be way easier. <laughs> yeah. Just give me that pistol and let's just end this shit. No shit, man. Now I can remember Jesse's last one. It was a couple years ago at New Year's Eve, and like she was hugging the toilet for the whole next day. Was you know you're just fucked. The whole oh, you're yeah. on the couch, you can't take care of your kids. Yep. Like, and and then they beat themselves up over that. Oh yeah. 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 And so then now that's they're the day they like, need oh, you the God. most. That's the that's the day that the kids need you the most is the day that you're unavailable. Yep. But I'm trying to remember. I got. I don't know. I, I mean, I've been hungover often, but I can't remember the last one. Jesse's last time was when? New Year's Eve. Oh, the, yeah, big time. The She's bad, bad one. Shit. Yeah, when you left your kids at our house. <laughs> the bad, bad one. 
Yeah, but we came and got them the next day, or I did. No, Blake, did. Blake sent Blake to it, and Reese wouldn't leave. Yeah, Reese had been told not to leave with strangers. He's like, Judge, something just don't feel right. I'm like, what's going on? Pain's like there. Pain's at the house. Pain goes, this is going to be really good. Pain's like, watch it. And he's like, I'm told not to leave with strangers. Hurt Blake's feelings. Because I was cooking breakfast. Blake came over for breakfast, New Year's Day. I was cooking. I was in the middle of cooking breakfast. I was like, hey, go get, go pick up the boys, and I'll have this done when y'all get back. And then he's like, fucking Reese wouldn't leave with me. <laughs> I mean... He was. That's not the worst but he, trait to like, acquire. Judge, this just doesn't feel right. <laughs> Payne kind of looks up. Goes, not this strangers. Is we just yeah. we had told him like, hey, you know, don't you don't just because you know somebody doesn't mean that you're gonna get in the car with right. them. Like you know, you might know somebody from church, and if they're like, hey, you know, you want to ride home or whatever the case He's is. Like, no, I'm waiting on my mom and dad. Unless right. it's family, you yeah. don't go Unless or something. Well, and you gotta be that way. Yeah. This, yeah. But it's funny because Blake is fly, is family. Yeah. Oh, I know. yeah. I mean, he's around Blake more than he is pain. <laughs> yeah. But pain, pain's like pain goes. This is going to be good. That's what he said because <laughs> he was laughing. And the Reese told me pain was trying not to smirk. He said, you can go home with Blake. It's safe. Or are you sure? I was like, yeah. <laughs> Pain started laughing. He goes, Can't get mad about that. Pain goes, no. That boy's not going to get himself in any trouble ever. No. no, he's very good with that. You he's know, you talk, about, you talk about Jaeger bombs. Oh, yeah. I'm so old. We had Jaeger shots and there wasn't no bomb to it. Yeah, that no Red, you, Bull. Red Bull didn't exist. Fact, no. Yeah. I remember going to bars and they had girls that were Jaeger girls. Yes. And all they did was go around and sell Jaeger. Jaeger. You guys don't ever remember it because y'all never had to take Phillips 44. I think it was Phillips 44. Cough syrup. It was Jägermeister. No they, shit. They, all they did was fucking changed that cough syrup to Jägermeister. No to. way. Tasted the fucking same. Syrupy. It's gross. It's I can't do it shit. anymore. But I think it was Phillips Forty Four Cold or Vicks cough syrup is what it was. <laughs> but it tasted just like fucking Jäger. So first time I had Jägermeister, I thought Fuck, I'm taking this my whole fucking life <laughs> yeah, for a cough. Yeah. <laughs> do I do I have a little scratch in my throat? But they also used to have some stuff called Sambuca. I've heard of that. And that was made, it was a liqueur, a licorice liqueur. It tastes like shit. And it was made in Yugoslavia. And a buddy of mine still had a body that said, a bottle that said Sarajevo, Yugoslavia. No which shit. Which I think Yugoslavia is now Croatia or some shit. I saw this the other day about Red Bull and it's, it's. To compete with Coca Cola by miles is Red Bull. And it comes in a tiny can, it costs a fortune, and it tastes disgusting. Okay. Now, when I say it tastes disgusting, that's not a subjective opinion. They researched it, and they went to a company which only researches, I promise this exists, it only researches the taste of carbonated drinks. And they asked people, what do you think of this drink? We're thinking of launching this drink. What do you think? And normally, the research would come back with a failed product. They actually said, this is the worst drink we have researched in the entire history of our company. <laughs> normally, research respondents would say something like, oh, it's a bit sweet for me, it's more for kids, a bit cloying, not really my thing. No. In this case, they came back with phrases like, I wouldn't drink this piss if you paid me. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, weirdly, the drink is so successful that they can basically run a Formula One team you know, on the profit for the lols. Okay? That's how successful it is. Now, what I mean by that is the opposite of a good idea is sometimes another good idea. That's what's weird about psychology. Highly contradictory. Now, let me explain why I think Red Bull's successful, which is it isn't actually a drink in the sense that Fanta's a drink. It's actually a kind of placebo. Or you could say it's a drug. Now, if you think about it, if you want a nice drink, you want it to taste nice. That's why Fanta's quite popular. It tastes like orange. We probably have a strong evolutionary propensity to drink things that taste a bit like oranges, OK? On the other hand, once you frame it as something with psychoactive or psychotropic powers, all the rules change. All the things that are a disadvantage as a drink are a strength as a placebo, okay? It's expensive, it comes in a small measured dose, which suggests to our unconscious that it's really, really potent. It tastes weird. Now, if you think about it, nearly all drugs taste weird. They I've never us. I've never drank a Red Bull. They fucking They're not us. good. No. They're not I, good, but you still like everybody it's like, man, I'm tired. I need a Red Bull. Yeah. Yeah. I've had I've tasted it. I mean, it's not like I haven't tasted it, but I, I've never bought a Red Bull for me. I've bought a shitload of them before between fucking guides and my kids. <laughs> and every time Michelle buys a shit sometimes at the house because the boys will want some of this weird <laughs> monster energy shit. Yeah. And so she buys them. I'm like, God damn it, shit's fucking Sixty seven dollars oh, a case yeah, or something. It's shit. fucking high. Mm -hmm. But people do it. But now And it's gotta be terrible. Sonic oh, has got a drink with Red Bull. Yep. Mm -hmm. They got Red Bull drink. And they got it's a like a slush or something. <clears throat> and they got another drink thing now called Dirty Dr. Peppers and Dirty Fanas. And it's look Better up, have some liquor look, look in up it. and see what it is. The dirty No, dirty it's not because it's a Sonic. Dirty Dr. Pepper. It's coconut and something else and a Dr. Pepper. 
Something in a, it might have been Red Bull even, but it's a dirty Dr. Pepper. No, it's not. I think it's sweet cream soda, coconut, and Dr. Pepper or something. They just saw Co- my advertising. Coconut cream and lime infused in your favorite yep. soda flavor yep. featuring Dr. Pepper and Fanta Orange. I like coconut cream, but I, didn't, I, I like coconut. I don't know how the hell you put yeah. lime with coconut. And you mix it all up. <laughs> have you ever had a have you ever had a Frio Coco? Uh uh-uh. uh. Or Coco Frio. Man, I love coconut. I absolutely love coconut. And so when we went to Puerto Rico, they have these stands, cold, ice cold Coco Frio. And it's like got a coconut and they got a straw in it and it's oh, ice okay. cold. I'm thinking, fuck, these are should be good. Why well, can't wait to went in and get it? It fucking tastes like butt water. <laughs> <laughs> coconut water, if you died on a fucking beach. That water would save your life. But it tastes, but it like, tastes shit. like shit. Yes. <laughs> and it's like lukewarm yeah. most of the time. Like even when they say it's cold. One it's time hot. I was in when I was down in Mexico, this place we were staying had a coconut tree and some had fallen off. And I'm like, I'm gonna hack one of these bitches open, <laughs> which is a task <laughs> if you don't know what yes. you're doing. And I finally mutilated this thing to where I could get a little bit of the water out. And it's fucking gross. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> it's so but gross. But I like coconut, but yeah. the water. We were, I was in Puerto Varda when I was in college. So this would have been in the late 80s, early 90s, because I went to college a long time. Didn't ever get a degree, but I had <laughs> you, a, good, had a damn good time. <laughs> so, anyways, while I was in school or while I was on this trip, there was a guy named Jose that was there. We went to the same resort for three or four years, 30 or 40 of us. And Jose's like, hey, Jeff, y'all, y'all, want, y'all want a really cool snack? I said, yeah. He said, watch the bar for me. Okay, we've been in that long. They let me watch the bar. Yeah. And so I get behind the bar, you know, and he goes up. He climbs up a fucking tree, takes a machete behind the bar, goes up the tree, and whacks his fucking coconut. First of all, I don't know how the fucker climbed the tree by himself anyways. Just hands and fucking feet, like a monkey, knock this fucking coconut down, come down there, got it, and he starts prying that fucker open. He took that coconut, and he got all that fucking that, that, that white meat out of it, and he mixed it with some kind of fucking hot sauce with chips. My fucker was good. Really? Yeah, I was shocked. Never had it since then, but it was really, really good. I'll be damned. But that was my experience with a with fresh coconut. <laughs> it's all in coconuts kill more people than sharks every year. Really? You're Off ten tree. You're, you're, so you're, basically, don't be looking in the water where he'd look up. You're thirty times beach. more likely to be killed by a falling coconut than a shark. I mean, I guess so, they're pretty. I mean, it's a rock. It's fucking yeah. heavy. Yeah, it's yeah. a rock. <laughs> with water in it. But and you it's fucking from, people open them fuckers up. Oh, I know. Thirty foot up. Oof. But that water in them, some bitches, is it's good, but, nasty. But it tastes sounded like, so good. Coco free. I thought, fuck yeah, I'm going to try it's gonna that It's going to be shit. water yeah, that yeah. tastes just like coconut. Oh, it and tastes it, like water like they wrung out of your sock or yes. something. Oh. And like put it into a glass. <laughs> the only it's difference bad. between co- a straw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. coconut water and almond milk, same thing. Almond milk is the nastiest shit in the I world. I see. Almond milk doesn't bother me too bad. It doesn't bother me. It's sweet. fucking ground up fucking nuts. I, don't, I know. What it, no, water. they got little titties. Yeah. It's just... Ground up walnuts or almonds and water, isn't it? That's all it I is. I think that's the only thing oh, they I have to. I think but, they, I think they make a powder out of the uh, almonds and then add water. I don't have any milk. problems with cow milk, so no. I, I don't either. Michelle buys the vanilla co- or vanilla or coconut almond milk, and she drinks oh, it in her coffee or maybe something. maybe I probably have only had it. like the vanilla or something. Yeah, I've just I've I'm not I don't like milk. Oh, I love really? Cereal. Yeah, and I love cheese and I like cottage cheese. And you just don't like a I, glass of milk. Fuck no. I, <laughs> Hell no. I hadn't drank a glass of milk since I was probably 10. Since the really? last time they made me. Oh, man. I like to take a, a nice cold glass of milk and then dip a bunch of cookies in it and mm-hmm. turn it into a fucking diabetic sandwich. Mm. Now yeah. I like ice cream, but yeah. I don't like fucking milk. Michelle or Coach Steele, that motherfucker used to drink a gallon of milk a day. What? I mean, like him and his family would go through like 12 to 20 gallons of milk a week. Oh, that'd break him these days, milk prices. What is milk now? Uh, it's probably... Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. Because Caitlin always buys, because she her stomach will get upset, so she buys like that. It's not lactate. Oh, well, it's she, she, her New Horizon or whatever that's like all the organic, organic bullshit. That stuff and it's, we it's like a, $6 a half gallon. In for a red carton? Shit. Yes. Yeah, that's what we buy. That shit is expensive. Well, but it, is. kefir milk. I think, Ke- I think it's no, called kefir. That's not what, I know what he's drinking. Okay. It's just organic milk. Yeah. Kefir milk is supposed to be like a probiotic. I, I don't drink yeah. that much milk anymore. I, I mean, it, if I want to play a symphony out of my asshole, I can drink a whole bunch of milk because oh. it gives me gas like a motherfucker. I can't drink. I, don't, I won't drink any type of milk at all. It's the most voluminous farts you can ever have. As long as you don't eat something to upset your tummy, you shit your pants. So tell me about this. You caught a 13-pound, oh. and you said that God was just like, I want you to have so this fish. that thing... Like that was not, 
Your I chances mean, of catching a fish bigger than that are pretty slim. I mean, I, y'all, y'all have got pros on here that never caught a fish that big. I'll ask. Right. I'm going to ask Maddie and Seth this weekend. I mean, weekend. that is that's like not a once in a lifetime fish. That's probably a once in 200 lifetime fishes. But no, that day we went out and it was in a tournament, which makes it even crazier. It was there's a couples trail that Caitlin and I do just to you know get out of the house as a couple, and it was at Fort Phantom Lake by Abilene. We went out. And uh, I had the place I wanted to start. It was open. I got there early enough, pitch black outside. And, like, I, if anybody on here is fishing fans, like, a lot of these, they'll they'll do boat call-outs and stuff like that, like in the Elite Series and shit like that. On all, a bunch of these club tournaments and these smaller organizations, they don't do that. They let you go to your spot. It's on an honor system. First cast is at uh, time X, which that morning was 7 a.m., I believe. Still pitch black. Uh, but I started on this point, and I was going to work to this other spot. Well, we're sitting there, and I got there about 15 minutes early. Then this other couple that they're really – they're hammers, too. They're really good. They come blowing by and st- stop right where I wanted to finish. Drift to. Which one of these days I'm going to learn to not work toward it, just go just to the go fucking there. spot. And there was another couple sitting right where I caught that fish, and they fished there for 30 minutes solid. So I don't know if they knew there were some big fish there or something. But anyway, I, I kept fishing up and down this bank. And then finally, I was like, fuck it. They're sitting where I want to be. Let's just jump across here. We'll flip right here and just work our way around and go to another spot. And I flipped up under this dock and saw my line whip, which is normally a fish while it's on the fall. And it's like, oh, shit, there's fish. <clears throat> and it just goes around the a, a post that's solid rust. I mean, this, there's no way this should have worked, not with a fish like that. It goes around the metal pipe, and I'm pulling tension because normally that'll kind of motivate them to – to go around right she comes right around that but instead of coming out goes around the other post goes around it like twice and then goes over the line so it made like a cinch knot almost on itself so i'm like oh fuck because by then i knew it was <laughs> Had you big. seen her then no, the water was super stirred up so I, there was maybe eight inch visibility in the water real muddy so i'm like shit so i just start trolling real easy i'm on my knees like running my trolling motor with my hand go up to it and I'm like, fuck, that fish is off. Cause like I I she had I didn't know it at the time, but she'd kind of put that little knot around it. So it wasn't letting the line slide like it normally would, which you don't want it to slide because that's like sawing your shit. But right. I'm I'm just feeling and I'd let off a little and it wouldn't pull. So I'm like, God damn, it's off. Then I just see this black stripe about that long come up. It's like, oh shit, it's a big one. It's still on there. <laughs> then Caitlin comes up there and she's by no means an expert fisherwoman. <clears throat> she's holding the net and just waiting. And I'm like, hang on, hang on. It's gonna come up again. And it comes up and or no, actually I had the net and I was doing it one handed and I missed and I gave it to her. And then she tried and didn't get it. And then she's she's like, Oh, hang on, uh, I think I left my line in the water and walks to the back of the boat carrying the net. And I'm like, <laughs> What the fuck are you doing? Get the fuck back over here. And she comes back up there and um finally i was so close to this dock i was like you hold on to the dock give me the net and then i I got it in the net and scooped it to where she was like bowed over like that so it wouldn't flip out and i had to pull and break my own line off and put it in the boat and all this time i thought it was an eight or nine pound fish because the water was so murky all Mm -hmm. i could see was like a silhouette of the back winning some money yeah and i was like we need this fish we need this fish as soon as I laid that son of a bitch on the deck, I was like, I just caught a double digit. And I've never caught a double digit. And I've fished since I was like six years old. And I didn't. So because I've never physically handled a fish that big, I just knew that's for sure 10 pounds plus. I'm like, it might be 11. You know, then, I, <laughs> then I pull my scale out and I'm shaking like I just shot a 180 inch buck. Like, <laughs> you know, all retarded like that and hold it up. And I'm like, oh, my God, babe. She's like, what? What? It's almost 13 pounds, which my scale is always super light for some reason. And uh, she's like, no, shut up. There's no fucking way. And uh, (laughs) this thing's mouth was this big. Like, you could hold it with both hands. And then I rode around. I didn't think shit of it. I was like, that might be a lake record. And I knew about the share lunker program, but I was like, there's no fucking way it's over 13. Just trying to, you don't want to get too excited and then be disappointed with the biggest fish you ever caught. (laughs) Then <laughs> right. by the time dude we pulled up to the ramp oh this is i don't I, I don't think i've ever posted this part anywhere so we keep fishing the rest of the day i went around the corner and caught a seven and a half pounder so i'm like we're about to have 40 pound bag this is gonna be stupid mm-hmm. didn't catch shit the rest of the day <laughs> so all day from like just before eight so o'clock you didn't take the, you straight to the dock fuck no i was that was my way in fish i was i was in tournament i wasn't thinking about getting share lunker program and uh 
we we're fishing the rest of the day and uh, about 11 o'clock so the night before i forgot to charge my batteries but i have i've put lithium batteries on my boat and they were at 65 percent. like that'll be fine about noon i was like oh, i'm gonna leave the recirculators on non-stop so the recirculating pumps keep oxygen in the water because she'd been in there so long and uh, I didn't think about, I guess, that it would, I don't know if that was what did the additional power draw, but at about 2 o'clock, all my graphs on my boat turned off. There's only one thing that does that, because well, lithium batteries stay at 100% power until they're completely dead. Mm. Well, that's the same battery that my motor cranks off of, and I'm on the opposite side of the lake as where weigh-ins at, and I got about 45 minutes to get over there. So I'm, I, I have a booster, pull my booster out. I forgot I let a guy use it a couple of weeks before when I was on the lake to boost his boat that was dead off. So I don't have enough juice to boost, boost off my own shit. So we just turned the trolling motor on high and are sitting in the boat. I look at my fucking trolling motor batteries. It's at 14%. I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm about to not get to weigh this fish that I caught. Finally got a buddy that had his charged up as a responsible adult and got my boat going, went in, and uh, we weighed it. And every when I got to the dock, Everybody on the lake knew I had that fish. How? I only told two of my fishing buddies, and then there was one couple that saw me catch it, the ones that started on that dock. So that everybody guy, was waiting. Everybody. I'm talking about non-fishermen. People out there in their old 80s models, play boats, like they just unloaded, see me come in there, are you the one with the big fish? I'm like, yeah, maybe. Kind of, kind of big. Yeah. yeah. Like, All right, hang on. Let me tie my shit off. I'm watching that. Are you about to weigh it? And I'm like, yeah. I, I felt like a little famous. <laughs> and I'm like walking up, got my shit. You and, want to uh, see her? Dude, I pull it out of the bag and everybody's like, oh, whoa. And I'm like, <laughs> showing it, like so pretending like I'm on the classic stage. <laughs> <laughs> weigh it in. And on the tournament uh, weigh in scale, it was 1368. So they're like, you need to call. Caitlin gets the number because I'm handling all the weigh in shit, calls the share lunker program. Then the lady, which that program is, it's insane. Like how fast they jumped into action and the professionalism of it all was crazy but natalie is i guess she's in charge of the program she starts asking caitlin like okay well what time did you catch it and she's like i don't know like 7 30 this morning they're like oh my god it's been in the live well all day and she's like yeah it's like oh what are her fins look like is she stressed or her gills still red all this like i mean they it's that's what they do is big fish and a uh, biologist came in because they all the main team that normally gets them was at the elite series event at Lake Fork because they figured a share mm -hmm. lunker was going to come out of that. And uh, the guy that's their area biologist came up. I can't remember his name, um, but he came up and weighed it. And by then, so it had been in the live well all day. And on a certified scale, it still weighed 1333. So if I'd have called when I first caught it, it would have probably been a 13 and a half or bigger, but whatever i don't give a shit and i get a like now i get to go to this banquet uh in october i get a free replica of the fish oh nice the fish is in athens texas at the share lunker facility right now where they're gonna spawn her out and cross they cross the genetics with uh 13 plus pound genetic males and then they turn those fry out in the lakes and that's that's the program that's that, a pretty awesome deal it's well, crazy what kind of money did you win <laughs> Here's the funny part. I caught the fucking lake record in a seven and a half pound fish, and I got third. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, won three hundred and something bucks. But now, what kind of series are you in? You're just in a local. Yeah, bass so so I fish in our just our local Haskell Bass Club. It's like twenty twenty one guys. It's actually a really competitive club. All the guys that fish in the bigger clubs all do really well. Um, and then cast is it's all couples. And there's different divisions, and every year at the end of the year, they do the championship, and it's at big lakes, like the Elite Series lakes, and there's normally 200, 150 to 200 boats at those. But these are all regional type of deals. It's nothing crazy. I don't have the time to put in to go practice two or three days. It's If I get to practice one day before it or a half day, it's pretty good. So how did you know that you wanted to be at that dock? Like you had just fished that lake? Yeah, I, I'd went, I'd, so we had our local club tournament there a week or two prior. And practicing for that, I caught what was my PB, uh, which was a 9.4 mm -hmm. in that same area. And then talking to friends and stuff, like I, I just couldn't find a better area. So it's like, I'll just start here and I'll work back and forth down through here and hopefully we can catch five fish. But I caught two of the right ones. They just, mm -hmm. and I mean, it's it's a motherfucker. That's those guys like, like uh, you know, I mean, y'all had Matt and Seth on the show. Like the the ability that those guys have to go out on a place they've never been on right. and just freaking 
find fish there's i mean there's a lot that goes into it that they do i mean i do a little bit of map study and shit but i i can't imagine the amount of time that those guys put in plus it's i mean it's a gift it's just like everybody's better at certain shit yeah but those dudes man that's that's why i, I think they all get so freaking frustrated sometimes it's because they are all like <laughs> they are all the best in their craft and mm -hmm. and you still get your ass beat you yeah. know sometimes but so yeah. you guys are going to the, you said we, going we, to Tulsa. Are you going to Classic? Mm -hmm. We'll yeah. be there. We're leaving tomorrow. We yeah, did it. We went there last year in Knoxville. It was a pretty cool event. If you're a fishing guy. Yeah. It's crazy. It, I it's mean. Cr like, you know, you got your hunters, but like fishermen are crazy. Cra like just the amount of fanfare that those guys get. Oh, it's nuts, Do you man. remember how many Academy buckets they gave last year? Because they were talking about it. I can't remember. Yeah. Any, everybody that walked in, the Bassmaster got a free Five gallon bucket with Academy on it. Academy, and they gave like twenty five or thirty five or fifty thousand of those away. God, and I mean they were. I mean they had them stacked. Mm -hmm. I mean you imagine that, that they, was just like your bag. Imagine, like, yeah. imagine yes. being yes. the guy who sold them that. Some guy's a bucket oh, yeah. salesman somewhere. I got a fifty thousand for Academy. <laughs> what? How many? Fifty thousand. <laughs> yeah. And let's just say that's the number because I'm betting you there's fifty thousand people come through that expo, mm -hmm. and it's crazy. And I bet shit when I seen how much a boat motor cost. Oh, it's stupid. And there was, it, I mean, there's you can spend by the time, especially these guys now. By the time they get electronics and shit all on their boat, hundred and fifty grand easy. What, what what is a what's the biggest m m motor that like Mercury or Evan Rude or whoever the fuck it is? I don't even know. Oh, uh, um, two hundred and fifty. Oh no, that so that's the so two hundred and fifty is the max that they set for the elite series. But like one of the guys, the the tournament directors in ours, they have a Bass Cat twenty one foot boat that has a Mercury three hundred R. So it's a three hundred horsepower 30, racing. It's engine. thirty thousand dollars for that motor, right? Yes, they're about. To th is it, it may be more for that one? But like what, a, the normal one that the Elite Series guys all like the Yamahas and the Mercurys that are all two fifties, those are twenty five grand probably. And there would be boats there that have four of them on there. Mm -hmm. The open console boats. Oh, the, yeah. hundred thousand dollars with water. Yeah. That's next level. Hundred thousand just in motors. Yep. Not account, but you can buy. Um, I think it's Mercury made the Verado. It's a it's a V twelve six hundred horsepower. It's so fucking big that the you know like on normal boats the whole outboard engine turns and it's all connected. This thing, the lower half is all that turns. The motor stays stationary. It's so big. It's a V12. And there's boats that have four of those on there. And I, th I can't remember what the price is on it. Mm -hmm. I'm wanting to say it's like a $80,000 motor. It may be more than that for one of them. That's crazy. Well, we those people were into the fishing big time. And they have everything there. You'll see a redneck guy walk around with overalls and his son. And then you'll see a guy in a business suit there. Oh, it's but crazy. It is and eight. it exploded uh, COVID when people couldn't go do stuff. Mm hmm you know, it's just like how everybody seemed to show up and have an RV all of a sudden. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> same thing, man. And, and like the lakes overnight just were packed because nobody could go do shit. Right. So everybody said, fuck it. We'll just buy a boat. But, I don't know how Tulsa will be. Knoxville was, was crazy. It was busy, busy, busy. The river was right there by this event center. So they were they would do their morning deal. I could see the morning when they take off outside of our hotel room. Really? Yeah, you could see them take off on the river right there at Knoxville. That'd be a nerve-wracking day. And, I, I'm going out competing for like a 1000 bucks first place. <laughs> They're going out for a hundred and something grand plus all the accolades. Like the classic, dude, mm -hmm. you win that. It's we, you're set we, on sponsors. We were eating dinner. We we with Maddie every night and Seth. And the people that come up, I, I can't imagine other than being at a Super Bowl and having the NFL players there. Could you, Andy, anything with more fanfare? Then people are crazy about them. I mean, they all wear their shirts. How, it looks like NASCAR shirts. Everybody's got yeah. all this shit on. And Matt's branded. the same in public as he is. Oh, uh, yeah, like he's, Probably worse. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine going somewhere with that dude. Order I, bet it's, I bet you don't stop laughing. No, he's he's right. He's a lot of fun. He got engaged, didn't he? Uh, married. Oh, uh, I don't know if he's married. He's married now. Is he now? They got married like two or three weeks ago. Um. Seth is one of the most intense dudes I've ever been around. Like he came out here turkey hunting he's for just three days. Super serious all just, the time, and like just he's always like really really focused. And like whenever he shot that bird, I've never seen a guy get more fucking amped. About, really? Oh my god, he went fucking crazy, <laughs> went fucking nuts. <laughs> but he had never shot a Rio, and like um, he. He was leaving the next day. Oh, I guess whether, we get spoiled to that shit. Yeah, whether or not he shot a bird, like he was leaving the next day, and like we did it on the last evening. So I think a lot of that was just kind of the the pressure of it all. Yeah, yeah. But like and like but, anxious about it. Think and you start thinking like it ain't gonna happen. No, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. It, we'd had a couple close calls. Um, I had I think I had a baseball game that 
one of the days he was here and like I met him after the baseball game and like he was fucking pissed. It's like, what happened? <laughs> fucking coyote. <laughs> fucking coyote. And like he he just chain smokes almost and like he's burning a heater and like cussing this coyote. Kind of he's like that fucking he's like had a bird on a rope and fucking coyote ran in between me and him. Like it was a dead bird. And then went out the next morning, nothing. And then that afternoon, you're just like, well, fuck. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Seth. There's he's, a, he's in the three daughter club too, I think. There's, Is he? There's a young, so. there's a young guy that fishes on the deal, and him and he was sitting next to me, waiting to go in to grab our table. And it, I didn't know who he was. Yeah, the there's the a, there's a lot of the young shirt, ones now that you just, had the shirt with all the fucking patches and shit. I mean, but everybody else is wearing them because they all that fishing deal. All the Chinese people, Japanese people, all there for. Them. Ushi oh, whatever yeah. his name is. But anyways. Yeah, there's like, I think, three in the whole thing. Yeah, they're, and, they're, and they're heroes. Oh, big time. Them people are all over that. So this guy, with this this guy, and I was talking to the guy, just having a conversation with him about something outside of fishing. And all of a sudden, the, the, he's got a pretty little girlfriend. And she goes, listen, she goes, that little boy has come over here twice. You need to get up and go sign his deal. He wants it on. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Signed his deal. I was like, oh, I guess he's a fisherman. Yeah. I didn't know who he was. But it's big. It, it is crazy. It's, it's a big it's a, super the, niche, but the it's fan super fair is big. amazing. And we're going to be in Tulsa, and I'm looking forward to that. And there'll be a lot of waterfowl hunters. We'll, we'll see their talk. But I, I recommend everybody to go to see these things. It's something to see. Oh, yeah. It's a hunting expo. You can go see it. I've never been to a safari club show. I would like to go. I don't give two shits about shooting a line. Right. But, but you anything. spent a career in the show circuit, right? Like, mm -hmm. Getting the business going, yeah. and, and when trade shows were at their peak, yes. and all of that. I mean, I remember going as you know, as a kid, like in the early days after you and Shell got married, um, we you know would just tag along and go to. Didn't you did one in Louisiana? Mm -hmm. uh, I think. Yeah, y'all got a yeah, knife everywhere. pulled on y'all. Yeah, and then I've made all those phone calls to Megan and mm -hmm. charged up a two hundred dollar phone bill i remember it, that it's funny how much <laughs> yeah i do remember that like when you're yeah, a kid goes, god damn that that, <laughs> that the 200 dollars to an 11 year old kid 12 year old kid might as well be 500 grand oh yeah because you're like i'm so sorry i'm so sorry fuck are they gonna pay for this <laughs> and now as an adult you know it's like it's 200 bucks i'm gonna have to mow the yard like 100 <laughs> times you left your right. watch somewhere too Huh? His dad's watch. You left your dad's watch. Somebody's watch at Papa Do's. No, time. it was my watch. That oh, was, was at Papa Do's because we were eating all the crawfish. crawfish. Yep. And yep. I took it off and left it on the table. No, that was the knife. That was that one. <laughs> or maybe I did that twice at fucking Papa Do's. We always ate there. That one, the knife that I lost, um, that was dad's knife. Okay. And we walked back in, and I think the lady was like, oh, no, nothing on the table. I'm like, bull fucking shit. But that, that was Papa Do's. I can't remember. You went to San, that was a watch there. You went to San Antonio with us. Yep. You went to Fort Worth with us many times. You went to Louisiana with us a couple of times. Yeah, we got Tony. We got you to go so you and Andy could do something. Well, me and Tony went to the casino. Oh, and then use and then use Zach and Tony. See and, now when the shoes on the other foot, like as a parent, that makes total yeah. sense. And then, <laughs> then keep you, each other entertained. You Zach and uh, and Andy. Y'all went walking along the fucking river in Shreveport. We are terrible parents looking back now at this shit. You can't do that now, no, though. No, fuck no. Somebody pulled a knife on y'all or something. Y'all <laughs> yeah, like, were like telling me all about it. I'm like, what the fuck is <laughs> yeah. going on here? Jeff's got an itch for gambling. You know? yeah. Just, yeah, you're, you're in yeah, Shreveport. Yeah. You're well, where were you when your yeah. child got stabbed? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was trying to win some money to pay and for the trip. Zach and Andy got to the big fucking fight coming home. Yeah. At the at the and Zach has been talking shit to Andy the whole time and I wouldn't let him fight in the car I was driving. So we got to uh, King County. We got to yeah, so King County, but then we stopped and got gas and and deal. Gloves and Andy out. was Andy was hiding behind the fucking gas pump and jumped <laughs> at Zach and fucking thought Zach was gonna get run over running through Wilmer Hutchins. <laughs> Mm. Oh, simpler G times. Mm -hmm. yeah, was. Life was so simple then. Did you see where the state of Washington just announced that the bar exam will no longer be required for an attorney to become a license to become? Oh, fuck, I thought they had already done to, that. I'm moving to Seattle. Can you believe that? Because <laughs> you, like, you can just like, just, what are you, apprentice? I guess I'm just an attorney now. I don't oh. know. Oh, you just identify. I don't know. So the, that's the state of Washington or the state DC? Of Was state of Washington. Because did you have you seen any of the Don Lemon Elon Musk interview? So Don Lemon was like, he was arguing with Elon Musk that there's not enough minorities in like doctors and all this other stuff. And Elon's like, well, like you can't lower, you can't lower the threshold for a doctor. Like mm -mm. you just, the standard is, should be the standard. Yeah, Whether, you want, you want to see racial stereotyping yeah. kick back up. He's like, it would, it would, it would kill more people if you lowered the standard to become a doctor just to allow more minorities into yeah. it. And Don Lemon just could not figure it out. <laughs> Dude, it's like 
you know, everybody, like, that was the big deal, I think, when we were in high school was, you know, racial profiling is what yeah. everybody always talked about. But if if that becomes the norm where attorneys, doctors, you know, any any highly skilled and any position that requires a, a lot of education like that and you want to be the smartest person, like, if you're dying with cancer, you want the smartest motherfucker that you can get access exactly. to and afford. But if, it, if you know for a fact that they're letting in minorities... Just, just because, because of that, right. your immediate thought when you go into a minority doctor is going to be, oh, God, I got the B team. Right. You know, yeah. I, got, uh, I got the one they let through. Great. I'm going to fucking lose this leg, you know? Yeah. And but it was I don't the give other one that was hurting. I don't give a shit. Like, if if, if you meet the criteria and you're yeah, gay, good, straight, I purple hair, I don't hair, give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Fix me. Yep. That's all I give a shit about. You, now, unless it's a proctologist, then I, it might get weird. I want small But if they, don't, if they don't say anything, keep it to yourself. Right. Do your own business, you know? But what'd you find out, Jeff? We're good. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, that's going to be the end of this one. We got to go pack. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just, but, and then Elon fired Don Lemon. Cause yeah, I saw that. Cause, cause it was, was supposed, supposed to, to have, yeah, on, he'd on already X. made that deal. So that it pissed him off enough. That's why he did that. I don't blame him. It's done. That's what I loved it when he did that interview after I guess it was Bob Iger or whatever mm -hmm. tried to mm -hmm. do that and it's like you want to you want to blackmail me with money go fuck yourself <laughs> and then Dana White did the same shit uh, about it was on Theo Vaughn's podcast mm -hmm. he was on there and they got to talking about people who you know you'd lose a sponsor for saying what you thought yeah. and um, and then uh, Dana White's like, well, well, who was it that did that? And he's like, Peloton. Peloton. And then he's like, hey, so-and-so, don't we have Pelotons all in the UFC gym? Fuck it. We're throwing them out. We're throwing them in the dumpster. I'll do a video of it. We're throwing them away. <laughs> and they fucking did it. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, don't you fuck with me. I'll do what I want. You know? It, it, was, uh, it was right after the time that Theo talked to uh, my guy, RFK. Oh, yeah. You're, you're an RFK guy? I'm an RFK guy. I think he's full of shit. Bingo. I don't think he's full of shit. He's full of shit. He's, um, he's a he's a ambulance chasing attorney, man. But he does it under the guise of environmental protection. Um it was Peloton, Peloton was the band was the for people who wanted an ad out. Peloton. That's it. And yeah. meanwhile you have RFK. So you, Peloton. He, yeah. What do they sell? Fucking bikes the stationary bikes? <laughs> yeah, dude. Peloton <laughs> sells stationary bikes and they got a problem <laughs> with Robert fucking Kennedy. Yeah. Fuck you, Peloton. <laughs> what, who the fuck are they? Yeah, first of right? All, are yeah. you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Fucking Peloton calling bitching about Robert Kennedy. Yeah, dude. You want to go nowhere? Who, who's the CEO <laughs> of Peloton? Huh? I want to see this fucking yeah, guy. I want to see this fucking lamb, dude. <laughs> hey, you know what gets you further than It's Peloton? funny how much confidence yeah, Theo got. Yeah, yeah, he did. He got real tough, didn't he? <laughs> like, yeah, come on, Dana. Barry let's get McCarthy. him. This fucking wiener snits alone. <laughs> let's see Barry McCarthy. Oh my God! Oh, oh, oh yeah! <laughs> oh fucking yeah! yeah Barry McCarthy looks like that guy, a hundred percent. And it, look, if you're just listening at home and you're thinking of what he looks like, you're right. You're he looks right. like a douchebag. <laughs> yeah, dude, hundred percent. Where's he from? Oh yeah, he looks like somebody that eats his own skin a little bit at a time. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, dude, is, that guy's brain that. works different. Who is, who is that guy? Theo, Theo Vaughn. If you call me up and said this guy was complaining about something, I'd say, oh fuck. So <laughs> all this come from San Francisco, California. There we go, my huh? boy. Ring a ling, dude. There you go. Yeah, one, they've been giving Pelotons to fucking vagrants, so that's why they're not leaving. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fuck you, Peloton. Yeah. So, I wanna... Do we have Pelotons in the gym? Are those Peloton? Asports, no, no, there's bikes next to it. Asports, ask, yeah, we're getting rid of them. Yeah, we're getting rid of them. We're getting rid of the Pelotons. I'll yeah, buy one. Ever Poor sorry he's going to kill himself, but <laughs> yeah. we're getting rid of the Pelotons. <laughs> hey, look. Pelotons are out of the gym. Whoever uses the most can fucking have them at home, but they yeah. can't use them here. <laughs> so, Dana White, didn't, didn't Peloton call him up and tell him, to, is that what this is about? No, so uh, Theo Vaughn was, so Theo Vaughn was complaining that after the RFK interview, he had some sponsors that came to him and said, you can't air that. Was it Peloton, one it was, of them? Yeah. yeah, it was Peloton. Yeah, fuck you. None and of our sponsors what, are telling us what we can say. So Dana Watt was like, you know what? Fuck you. Yeah. We're out, I, it was we're beautiful. We're out of the Peloton business. And I, was, I didn't watch it. So I was actually, I was working in the yard or something and was listening. I was like on the mower or something going, <laughs> oh, just laughing my ass off. But Dana Watt's a dude I would like to meet. Yeah. 
I mean, he's I mean, he's probably a no bullshit, hundred percent kind of dude. But did he have any money till he got involved with the Furtado brothers? I don't think so. They made him a wealthy man. Oh, a very wealthy. He man. made them very wealthy. But does, no, whoa, 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 hold on, no, that guy, no, they were wealthy way before. He made them way more money. He might have made them more money, but they're they, they turned a fucking restaurant into the Houston Rockets <laughs> and a casino in Vegas. They're sharp, sharp, sharp guys. I think they own the Houston Rockets. Yeah, but it doesn't help. It doesn't hurt whenever you get into the casino business. But you got to have enough clout to get into. Oh, it. Yeah. I understand. They, but, but once you get, I mean, there, they started out. It's a license to print money. Did they start out with Landry's Restaurant in Houston, one restaurant? Oh, you're you're outside of my... They own Joe's Crab Shack. They own Landry's Seafood, which Landry's Seafood is really good. It's yeah, like Land- Landry's is also... Yeah, Saltgrass. Saltgrass is theirs. Um, and uh, There's like six restaurants yeah, under the have. Landry's name, I think. For can't remember. But they made their money for Tata, for Tita, whatever it is. They own the Houston Rockets. Dang. And, so they're they're next level, like... Oh, they're they're one percenters. Uh, that's, that's fuck you money. Yeah. They're billionaires. Lorenzo, where his father founded a casino, but his father made the casino in uh, the Green Valley Ranch. Seventy six. Was it Lorenzo Gre- and his other brother Frank assumed leadership of the Station Casino? Okay, the Palace Stations. That there's in like ninety three. Those are re- those are uh, local casinos in Vegas. It's where all the locals would go. Oh. Palace Station, Union Station. They got the train on them, and there's there's like four or five of them that used to be off the strip. And that's where all the locals would get. Ran- Rainforest Cafe is another one I was trying to think of. That oh, they own that too. That's Landry's. Landry's owns it. Yeah, that's they their, still own that's that. Them. But they're at uh, there's one of them at Grapevine Mills. I saw the other day. Mm-hmm. I hadn't been to a mall in oh that's a before, sad place. I hadn't been to the mall before COVID. I hadn't been to a mall. I don't think in five or six it's years. Fucking sad. Me, me and Michelle went to she, she, Michelle went and something at Dillard's the other day at Aveline. So I went to Dillard's just in Dillard's and going anywhere at the mall. Ghost town, baby. We took, we took Dylan and one of her friends to the mall last week at Grapevine. I hadn't been to a mall in forever. And that's a big sum bitch. Yes, that's a big mall. Mm-hmm. And. I'm telling you right now, if you've got a 12 or 13 year old daughter and you let her go to the mall with her friends, you're a fucking idiot without you being there. Oh, yeah. Because there's 12 or 13 year girls walking around with 16, 17 year old boys. She saw it all over the place. And it's, it's, so, de- <laughs> it's, so, de- it's so depressing going to a mall. It is, man. It's, it's like it used, to, it used to be so lively. Like, yeah, that's that where was, you wanted to go. Dude, and I remember we, when we'd go in high school, it's just like, oh my God, look at all these. Get to, go girls. The, get to go during the day? Yeah. Are you kidding me? It's yeah. Totally different place. Go watch a movie. When you pop out, it's jam packed. Then the arcade was still super busy. And all you, the, and you guys grew up in the 2000s. Yeah. You should have been 1980 in the 80s. It was the when shit. They, that was the thing. I mean, yeah. You watch Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That's yeah. fucking mall everybody had in oh, every yeah. town. It was amazing. Yeah. But you know what I noticed the most about the malls in the last 10 years? I hadn't really been to a mall in 10 years. Is how fat the fucking mannequins have gotten. Okay. <laughs> them bitches are pulling around some fucking pounds I'm telling you We're well, walking, I mean we all have as we age you know <laughs> they, they bitches are on a big biscuit diet because we walked by Victoria's Secrets I told Michelle I was like god almighty yeah, I thick, said, thick they girl panties big now, panties now yeah. over there they Just, lost a shitload of money didn't they trying the fat girl yeah, campaign yeah now they're going back to the fucking the, skinny little yeah. stripper girls but but, but the yeah, it's all stupid. But I mean, I'm serious. Every fucking and so I started noticing fucking mannequins are fat. Really? Like, but but society's fat. Oh yeah, they're just trying to make everybody yeah. feel better about themselves. Yeah, no shit. And so, oh, the mannequin wears it. Well, yeah, fucking yeah. mannequin weighs three fifty. Yeah, now. The mannequin's about as big around. That's uh, smaller than that. Maybe that wing. Yeah, <laughs> they used to be. They used to be skinny, big old titties and a little waist and and hard nipples. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all of them. Now saggy titties, big asses. Yeah, talking about no t- talking about Reese in a few more years. Like I remember that phase where all you needed was a mannequin. Oh yeah, and you were there. <laughs> yes, but I was absolutely. That's one thing I noticed. I told Michelle, I said, "God damn, twenty years yeah. mannequins." If have I take fat. if I take my kids to a mall, like Langley, seven, she'll be eight this year. It would be the strangest thing she'd ever seen. It wouldn't make sense to them, I don't think. No. Like, why? You can just do this on the internet. And I'm sure that's how it is with high school age kids now. There was actually people there, and I was kind of surprised. Oh, really? But 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 now it was spring break. Yeah. And it's prom season, and there's a place that sells prom dresses. Yeah, and that but fucking place if you would have, nobody would have wanted to go to the mall during spring break whenever we were younger. No. Because it had been jam packed. Yep. And it's just like, I remember, like now, when we, it's okay, it's like school's about to start back. Order all your clothes on the internet. Yeah, most don't people, ever leave. Most people do that, and, and that's what's killing malls. Oh yeah, and then you used to. I remember Dad would be like, "All right, here, Missy, here's whatever, whatever the budget was, eight hundred bucks or whatever." 
for the year's worth of school clothes. And we all went to the mall. It was miserable. Tried on everything, made sure it fit. Got a couple of my pants that were a little bigger in case I grew so that we didn't have to go back to the fucking mall. And you get your tennis shoes and... Yep, that was it. And now you can sit there and, oh, well, we'll try these. Damn, those run small. Oh, well, it's free return. Send them back in the mail and come back. And yeah, man, it's it. The world is changing at such a pace. And and I've kind of, I've dodged diving into it like three times, but we've touched on it so much on how things have changed on kids' safety. Like, I'm not going to be able to, in good conscience, let my kids ride their bikes around town. And that's kind of like heartbreaking for me because those are my fondest memories of being a kid in small town USA. Yeah, but it's not like it was. No, but like we would beat the streets up, man. And as long as I was home before dark, it was all good. Nobody even, mom and dad weren't even thinking about being worried about me. When, when pain was the last. His little generation in Knox City was the last kids that had bikes that did shit. Because I remember coming home and there'd be 10 bikes in my front yard. And I thought, fuck, there's our food bill for the week. Yeah, and, no and, shit. And, and there'd be 10 kids staying at my house like for three or four days. Like an industrial vacuum yes. went through the pantry. Yeah. <laughs> and, they were, and they were there all the time. But but you, you did that see, in Wichita Falls. Yeah, all the time. And that, never, what, what was Wichita Falls when you were a kid? It's, it had to have been 90. It's 100,000 ish. There's 100,000 people. It's been yeah. this, Wichita Falls hasn't grown or dropped much in since 1940, probably. So it's 100,000 100, 100, people. people I can tell you right now, after the tornado hit in 1979, April 10th, on April 11th, I got on my bike with three or four little fucking scallywags I hung out with. Out. We rode our bikes 10 miles, probably, going from, and we had a really good program because on April 12th, we figured this out really well. They were feeding everybody. <laughs> oh, so you're getting free meals? Starvation <laughs> Army had fucking sandwich and well, Coke. Did they you say the everywhere. Starvation Army? Starvation Army. <laughs> And we went from, we would go at about every five or six blocks, there'd be another little starvation army deal no there. And shit. they had sandwiches and Cokes. So y'all just oh, we eat and drink. Up. Go to the, we spent all day long, right? We gained 15 pounds during that <laughs> tornado. Just riding around looking. But but that's the way things, we rode bikes. You know when I came in at nighttime? When I heard, Jack, Tony! <laughs> and it's like, I, oh shit. I would be six blocks away in our neighborhood. We lived in a neighborhood that was... Probably there's 2,500 people lived in our neighborhood as a housing addition. Yeah. And someone would say, Jeff, I heard your mom hollering at y'all a minute ago, you and Tony or somebody. It would go down the street. Yeah. Game of telephone. And Todd's mom would be the same way, hollering for Todd. But see, that's the thing, too, is like people were more connected as a community. Yeah. Now, even in small towns, like, like I've got a few people that, you know, everybody, we all have our friends locally. But used to, it was like that. Now, somebody screamed like, oh, my God, where's my kid? Where's my kid? <laughs> It's a yeah. coin toss if they're going to give a fuck or not. Yeah, and well, used and to people would stop what they're doing, run out and help. Right, but and back I'm, then there wasn't nothing to get. Everybody worked outside. There yeah. was no internet. We had three channels. Yeah, good point. I didn't have. We didn't have cable TV till no. I was in junior high. But they didn't even have it. You had three channels. Yeah, the and they was, they were worthless except the, for news time. Maybe. The day of the tornado, I ran in my house. The tornado came down, and I could see it. And we were all, and everybody at once noticed it. What is that? Yeah. And I ran through my house as I was running through my house. The news came on and said there's a tornado at Ponderosa State, which is a holiday. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for the and update. <laughs> telling everybody to get down and stuff. And as I'm running to the back door, all the electricity goes off because it blew all the power lines coming into town. But it didn't matter what you did. There wasn't no, nobody stayed inside. Everybody had right. a garden. Everybody worked outside. <clears throat> That's what you don't have. No, and you all knew your neighbors. Yep. But even if you didn't like them, today you knew them. Yeah. Today's kids just live in a different world, but nobody's outside. I no. go driving down the blocks right now. You don't see kids riding. No, we, if, if, if that was the main reason that we did that damn above ground pool. Finally, it's because that's the only way. Like when it's hot. Yeah. As a parent, we're. I mean, we're just as bad as the kids. Hundred percent. But it's like God. It's one hundred and six degrees. I ain't gonna go push them on a swing right now. I don't want to go watch them ride their bikes so some piece of shit doesn't scoop them up and haul them away for the rest of my life. Like. So we did that, and we used the shit out of it. And then in the winter, it's like, oh, it's pretty today. Let's go outside. But it's like, oh, it's a little windy. Oh, it's cold. You know, we're, we're. I mean, we're headed right toward, you know, the movie Wally, where everybody's in their, mm -hmm. their little floating scooters with a TV right in their face and fat as fuck, and their joints don't work right because their skeletal structure is separated from being so, uh, you know, just so lazy what? and not doing anything. How old is... How old are the girls? Seven, five, and about a year and a half. Okay. So little Elizabeth Taylor is seven years old. Mm -hmm. That's second grade? She's first grade. First grade. So Hutch moved in th when Payne and we West were in third grade, I think. 
Wes Hutchinson used to ride his bike to my house by himself when he was in first and second grade all the time, yep. and Payne would ride over there, not th nothing of it all. No. Would you care for Reese riding his bike to my house with that? We hadn't let him yet. <clears throat> but that but probably this summer, this summer will probably happen with the pool. But he's got Jameson wanting to hang around, so it probably won't happen. He's had there's been a couple times where he's had like a five minute head start and, on and this, it's and we're fucking from your house. Five blocks, eight blocks, five six blocks, five six blocks. Not yeah. Too far. Well, but, but I mean, the seven, fact that we live in a world blocks. where you have to wear it, and not a single one of us is thinking they might get hit by a car. That is not even in my worry list of turning them loose. No, it's fucking somebody taking them. S some sick motherfucker coming through, seeing them, scooping them up. And knowing what I like, we all know from what we've listened to from sources, and like the what your brain would do, imagining Be the awful. horrors that are going on. Yeah, I, I don't know how you live after that point. No, it's terrible. We, I mean, it's horrible. We had a little girl eight years old. I'm gonna say eight. I'm guessing eight or nine years old. Rode down the um, elevator with me and Michelle in Mexico at a resort from the top, eighth floor. Door open, bing. There's this little girl in there. I'm like, we're on the top floor of this hotel. Yeah. We get in there, and I push the bottom. I said, where are you going, honey? She just kind of looked at me. And so we're going down. I go, where are your parents at? She only spoke oh. French. Oh, shit. She got out of the fucking air, uh, elevator, running through the lobby of the hotel. I don't know where she went. I'm thinking, this is where fucking kids abducted. We're in Mexico. Yeah. 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 This no, was eight shit. years old riding down the fucking elevator. But when we were kids, at a, we'd be at a hotel in the city somewhere. We'd ride up and down the elevator, go down by ourselves. It was different, no risk. Different world. Yep. That's before five belows. Have you ever been in a five below? I've seen the sign. Have you been what, in one? What is a five below? Everything's it's under a five dollars. Fucking dollar. shitty dollar general oh, that they yeah. have in a mall. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it's what it's shit. It's pure <laughs> ass shit, is all it is. I talk shit about Dollar General. They called me from the corporate office, so I guess I'm gonna get a call from Five Below. Do you really got a oh, call? Fuck yeah, I did. No, you it wasn't because we talked shit, it's because Maddie said he'd get a uh, dollar, general dollar general neck general tattoo and neck, a, neck tattoo. And a guy from corporate called and said, Hey, we listen to y'all's podcast. We thought it was funny. <laughs> You're like, fuck you, dog. Yeah. can't get behind it, but we love it. Yeah, we, we can't really say much, but we yeah. it. Anyways, Five Below. Dylan wanted to go to Five Below. I'm like, what's Five Below? Yeah. I'm thinking they sell clothes like wintertime clothes. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. Everything's Five Dollars so and Below. It's Five Dollars, so, not Five Degrees. So we walked by there, and I looked in there, and she's like, oh, there it is. And we were leaving. I said, we'll come back tomorrow. We'll go to Five Below. We'll stop at one on Wichita on the way back. Oh, I want to go in one. I'm like, right, I go, it's nothing more than a fucking Dollar General. Oh, they got so much more stuff. I said, no, that's not stuff. That's called shit. Yeah, shit. That shit that you yeah. that you will wear once, maybe. Yeah. It's like the trinket you wear. You used to buy at the watermelon festival, those little yeah. toys and shit. Yeah. By the time you get home, they don't fucking work. No. Or, away. or I told her, I said, Dylan, you know what that is? That's the same shit they sell at Mr. Gaddy's when you got 10,000 tickets to get rid of. Yeah, that you spent $80 yeah. getting. Yeah. yeah. That's a $20 pencil eraser right there. <laughs> <laughs> we were we recently. It's like, I'll went, just buy you this shit. <laughs> yeah. We went to uh, the Great Wolf Lodge. Oh. What a fucking racket. No, oh, dude. It's they so charge you expensive. For, they charge you for parking now. It's so fucking expensive. They I saw you that for parking lot last week parking. and I laughed about it. So, like, you it's know. It's so fucking expensive. We spend, uh, the kids had money uh, for the arcade. Yeah. I think, I think they each had like 100 bucks. $200. Whoa, 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 whoa. I huh? gave them a whole lot more money than that. So, y'all cheated them boys what? out of some money. Now, whatever it was. <laughs> I told Michelle, I told Reese, I said, your parents are going to fuck you out of that money I gave y'all. How much money did you give them? Whatever you gave they've them, got, they both had about three hundred dollars. Oh fuck no! We no bullshit. Money. Yeah, I know. Y'all owe him some money. I'm gonna tell him. Andy's over here sitting with his right ass cheek <laughs> well, no. from his a billfold. They've went on two different places. I gave him money for, and Andy and them have screwed him out of getting to do shit. They used the flu as example for the skiing trip. You know how long it would take you to burn through fucking six hundred dollars at an arcade? Not long. I wouldn't anymore. want to be there. Caitlin, Caitlin burned through between food and then the games at Mr. Gaddy's and Abilene. She burned through eighty five dollars in less than an hour. Oh yeah, hundred percent. But like. You know, we've been in the arcade for so long, and like you come time to get your tickets. And Reese, Reese found a game like where like all you do is you put your you scan your card, and it like it's got tickets. That's spinning, where they fuck you, and you don't have to carry coins anymore, right? So like he hit a roll, and it had like eight hundred fucking tickets in it or something like that. So he just stayed on that machine, and so anyway, like it comes time for the kids <laughs> to get their shit, yeah, because that's all it oh, is. It's, a fucking it's GI Oriental Joe. trading shit is what it is. But I was looking at like the exchange rate for like. So many tokens equal this dollar amount. A fucking little bitty eraser like this was like five bucks. No shit. Yeah, I was Man. like, this is the dumbest. That's shit That's where they're ever. making their money, dude. We, we were at, we were in, we were in Canada with the boys this year, and we went to a fucking all inclusive. They did all kind, they had all kinds of shit there, and and we went to an arcade. It was like a mini Six Flags, mini Six oh, okay. Flags deal, and we swapped that fucking deal. And we did the deal, and I'm waiting and waiting. I'm like, listen, 
fucking just give some other poor kid your tickets. You can buy shit. We can stop somewhere else and yeah. buy some shitty toys. And we did. We ended up giving a bunch of tickets away. Well, and they but take then, forever to pick something yes. because they don't want any yeah. of it. Yes. And then one 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 grandkid. There's always that one grandkid. Oh, I didn't get really all I wanted. God damn, just fucking. I'll buy something. Yeah. Let's go. And you'd come out way ahead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With okay. nicer shit. Yeah. It's like we'll go to Target. But like getting down to like the. It's like okay, you got ten tickets left. Figure it out. That takes for fucking ever. Yes. Do I want a pencil or do I want a mechanical pen? It's like I don't give a fuck. It. Like we got. Yeah, you're not going to use either one of them. Yeah, yeah you're going to lose it before you get back 100%. to the room anyway. Or you're going to fight over it, and I'm going to take it away and break it in half. Yeah. So, but yeah, and and how expensive shit is too. God damn. Well, grow. I don't. So I, Jeff and I got into a little bit of an argument a couple days ago, and I've got nah. I've got to apologize just a little bit. Boy, it's the first. Not apologize, but I do have to, uh, let me see if I can find it. Be nice, because I'm fixing to go to Seattle and become an attorney. (laughs) Sue your ass. Under Trump, a household income of 59 grand a year could comfortably afford monthly mortgage on a typical U.S. home. But under Biden, that number has now risen. Let me guess, 81,000. You want to guess? Household income? To afford just a mortgage or like just to, to live comfortably, just, like all your bills paid and everything. Comf- just a comfortable lifestyle. I bet it's, I bet it's almost 100. 106,000. God wow. damn. Wow. I know things are expensive. 106,000 so, is the new. 50,000. Is the new middle class. If you're not making six figures a year, you're getting left behind. When I was listening to, to the, the all knowing Dr. Phil on Joe Rogan's deal, one of the stats, and I hope I don't fuck it up, but he was talking about that the. the the line between middle and lower class is so thin now yeah. that once you go to the 20% below that line, you take the, the middle 20% of the lower class, I think is what he said, only 5% work full time, which means it's all primarily welfare people in that class. Then you jump across the line to the middle class and that 20%, 95% work full time jobs. Right. And the difference in their annual household income is literally thousands of dollars, not tens of thousands. Yeah. So less than ten thousand dollar difference to sit on your ass versus working your ass off chasing the American dream. And that's but a hundred and six grand to be able to and that's not talking about some no lavish half million lifestyle. dollar house. No. no. That's just paying your bills it's and fucking not, bullshit. not worrying. It's like every two steps you take forward, the government fucks us up where you're taking three steps back almost. Yeah. What What do you think the poorest city in America is? City, not town, city. The poorest? Yep. Oh, man. It's probably in California. No. Just just because of, or or, or would it be like No, by income. Going by household income. Oh, okay. Mm. I'm going to say New Orleans. No. I haven't looked it up. Far Texas. Oh, yeah. Down by McAllen. Their household income is less than $25,000 a year. Now, now, that's taking in the whole town. Wow! So if you know there's rich people, people making there. million a year. There's that you know that's happening. Big landowners or some shit. There's a banker. Gas. There's bankers and accountants are making two or three hundred thousand. Yeah, twenty five thousand a year. That means a lot of them people are living in fucking nothing. Jeez. Now, now that's my information off of a website. I have no idea how true it is, and it may be according. To, I mean, it's there's you got Yahoo Financial backs it up, and they say far, far, and you just F A R like a long ways. P H A R R. It's right down by um, McAllen and all that down there. So it's another border town, basically. Mm-hmm. 40% of forty percent of its population live below the poverty level. Now, here's what's crazy about Far. Far, San Juan, McAllen, all them towns down there have a huge influx of winter Texans that go there. Really? So rich farmers from Nebraska go down there and they stay for three months. Why there? Because it's 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 it's, it's if you lived in fucking dirt ass cheap, it's cold. It's not. It's not cold. Yeah, those people from North Dakota, them old farmers in North Dakota, South Dakota, like Blake, he don't do nothing in the winter time. That's too so cold. It's too cold, so they fucking go down there. And even when my grandparents in the late seventies and early eighties, they would go to South Padre every year for a couple, two, three months. Mm-hmm. We'd go down there and stay. They had a condo there just to get some it's relief. Just, it's just not cold. Yeah, they go. My, my grandparents would go stay for a month or two months every year. My grandpa was a retired postal worker. Well, they my call them snowbirds. Was, they call them yeah. te- winter Texans. Oh, okay, is what they <laughs> well, call them. More snowbirds. Snowbird. Yeah. Snowbirds are winter Texans. Back in the day, they either went to Arizona. Arizona around Phoenix, yep. or they went to South Texas. So they're heading to the desert to get out of the the cold, they yeah, don't show cold snow. wet climate. But my grandpa, they lived in Southeast Kansas. They'd go for two months every year. They'd go in January, around January 15th, and they'd go back home when spring break started. They'd head back home. Yep. And that's what they do every year. 
But I just don't know what it's going to... I know what it's going to take to fix it, but I none of us are willing to do it. But, but like, how... Yeah. Like, I'm not willing to throw away my life. No. I, I mean, and that's you, the, that's the problem with our entire... Our entire, like, uh, philosophy on life, I guess. The whole, just leave me alone, let me do my thing. Right. Eventually... Can't do that no more. No. Because they're going to say, <clears throat> okay, you just sit over there and do your thing, and we're going to do whatever the fuck we want to do. It's just like this TikTok ban. Like, everybody wants to, whatever. So be a better parent. Same bullshit. Why aren't they banned in Facebook? But it's... It's worse. But it's, it's like, if you read what's in it, it's like anything that the president deems in... Whatever. I can't remember the language, but like anything that he deems inappropriate, he can just... Yeah, that sounds a lot like turn, Russia and China, doesn't Turn it? the light switch can, off can, on it. Can you imagine, in a fair election, Trump's going to win? We, we all know that. In oh, a yeah. fair election, he wins easy. Especially right now. I mean, the blacks and the Mexicans, they don't want to vote. They don't want fucking Joe Biden. They've had enough of this shit. Yep. In a fair election, Trump wins easy. They pass this bill. Trump comes up and says, you know what? Fuck CNN and all their lies and MSNBC. Joe Scarborough, kiss my ass. Yep. You're off. Or, or they'll they, be raising hell. About they use some AI engine to, to generate this deal where Trump's on there. That's like fuck all the minorities yeah. or yes. whatever, and it looks and sounds just like him in the same background, and it's perfect. That's what's coming next. They yes. launched that that's, two weeks before election. You can't get that fixed before no, the damage and, is done. And that done. probably is what's coming. But we 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 live in a bubble. Ninety percent of people that listen to our podcast are not fortunate as we are. Oh, they I live know. In, they live. All over. Just a guy called me from Florida just a minute ago. Listen to the podcast. I mean, we have people from all over the United States, the East Coast, West Coast, everywhere. Those people don't. Li- li- they're not as fortunate as we are. We 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 live in a shelter where we live in. Oh, West I know Texas, it. And a that's very big scary. shelter. It is because when you get to the real world and you see something. Andy told me something that really scared me the other day for my grandkids, and I didn't really say much. Is he told me at Great Wolf Lodge there was some little want to be thug gangbanger at 10 years old on there cussing i'll kill that motherfucker blah blah blah, blah. At, the, at the deal yeah we're standing in line you know how they have like the big rides and like the smaller yeah, kid yeah, rides yeah. well like we were on the smaller kid ride in the humidity room yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's uh i can't remember what he was saying but like he's dropping the the n-word and fucking this and this what did he say I can't remember what the rap was, but like he just kept saying it over and over again. And like like, a, like lyrics, like a song, or I was he talking I, shit? No, no, it's like a song. Oh, yeah. okay. But I don't. But like he's not much older than Reese. And oh man, I'd whoop the dog shit out. I, I'd probably be like Reese, get your even when my kid I'd be like Reese, get over here. Like, what are you doing? Would right. you think your dad would let you get by with that? Which but, I know he wouldn't do it. But like I'm standing in line with my kids, and like you're like he, it's him and. And, you know, two of his buddies are in line by themselves, no parents. So I don't know if the parents were there. I don't know if the parents dropped them off. And it's just like, fucking shit. Yeah. But. And they deal with that every day. Their every kids deal day. with that at school. I wouldn't go to, I won't, I won't go to Six Flags ever again. Because everybody I know at Six Flags told me it's become nothing but a babysitting service for 14 year old thugs. Oh, God. And it's just they run wild. Because they I do those season passes. Yeah. And the, and the parents and the season, drop them off yeah, in the morning. dollars drop your ass off. Here's twenty bucks cheaper for lunch, than, cheaper than yeah. child care. It, and, and you're in an enclosed area where you're safe. Well, you're not safe. It's a bunch. Of, I've seen some videos there of the fights and shit they have in there. It's out of control because these parents don't parent no more. No. Nope. Then if you get onto them, you're getting trouble. See, you guys did not even grow up in the era I did. When I grew up, we had <laughs> fucking old nosy fucking people in the neighborhood. Oh yeah, the and window would, watchers. Oh, and they no, but they, no, they would fucking <laughs> my age. They weren't window watchers. They were front porch watchers. They were in the front yard watchers. And they weren't watchers. They were screamers and talkers. Where are you going? Does your mom know where you're at? Oh, yeah. You know? But people cared. They, they did. And, and But as us, that's a grouchy-ass widow down the road. Yeah. You know? yeah. She, bitch, I saw you touching time. that girl on her butt. I will be telling your mom and uh-huh. her mom. So now you're like, oh, fuck. Yes. There's eyes everywhere. All the time. Yep. And it was that way. Every neighborhood had those people. Those people now don't give a shit. Nope. Or they don't say nothing. And the difference is, if you told my mom or dad I did something disrespectful, I was going to get my ass beat. Like double. Yes. And maybe it was something I wasn't even going to get in trouble for before. But now I'm going to get in trouble for it. So you really hated that nosy old bitch because she got you in trouble all the time. <laughs> she got your ass beat. But we don't have that no more. No. And, and if you go to now, a parent, and I, and I saw this as a judge. In my 15 years of being a judge, there was a big difference between my first year being a judge and my last year being a judge, dealing with parents. When you dealt with your parent, your kids got in trouble for alcohol, getting caught with pot, whatever it was. When I first was a judge, there was there was some kind of repercussions at home. Oh, yeah. My last couple of years, it was like, fuck, I gave him that. Yep. You know, well, I don't give a shit. I don't want to stand I, I said he could have it. Well, state law says you can't. Yep. 
that's the disrespect. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, and it's not. And you're and, the bad guy. Yes. Not the, the kid. And the cop's always the bad guy. Yep. He's always the victim. Well, you're, it's funny because your son's been a victim 26 times in four years. So maybe it's him doing something. Well, and we're on pace right now with how police are viewed. Like, who the fuck wants to go be a cop right now? Nobody. They don't. And I mean, recruitment's crazy low. I, I'm pretty sure DPS is about to have to up their salaries to try to attract more recruits. And used to, that shit was so hard to get into. Yeah. And I mean, so what are they going to end up doing? They're going to have to lower standards to become a police officer so that they can fill the seats. Nashville's doing it now. They've got a, it's a. Now it, you're going to get more shitty cops, which they, is the whole fucking source of why everybody started bitching about cops in the first place. They want to do it to promote more women to become police officers. In Nashville, I think it is. It went from 11 to 13% of women make up the police force in Nashville. I can tell you the same thug that'll by, beat a cop will beat a woman. So. Their goal by 2030 is to have like 30% women. And it's all just to say it, yeah. just to tout it. So they, they've they lowered what you have to do. So, it, you know, there used to have to be like a fitness test. You had to be able to yeah, lift yeah, so yeah. much. You know, like if your partner's shot, you should be able to pull them out. Now Get sprayed it in the is, face and, and fight while yeah, you're it's, pepper sprayed. Uh, and, they showed the obstacle course. It's a fence. And it's a wall. That's if, it? If you can jump over, that's part of it, yeah. Like, you can jump over these two things, like, you can be a cop in Nashville now. This but is, that, this that, is that, what that happens just, when you get too comfortable as a society. But that just goes back to what we were talking about with Don Lemon and Elon Musk about the uh, the D, DEI stuff and, you know, lowering to be a doctor and stuff. I mean, you're just going to get, you're just going to dilute the pool and it's just going to be a bunch of shitty people that yeah. shouldn't be cops. you got a 1 in 10 chance of living through cancer gun. because if you get a shitty doctor, you're not going to make it. Did you see that video in Florida where the acorn falls on the car and the cop and his partner fucking unload their pistols into the back of the back of the... You hadn't seen that video? It's fucking wild. So they're so dumb they thought they were getting shot at? <clears throat> Guy just it, it hits and sounds like a gun going off and they fucking unload on the car. Some poor fucker. They shot 77 times and didn't kill him. <laughs> Well, at least they suck at shooting. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. That's funny. funny shooting. I was giving an update on heyjackass.com. It's a Chicago website. It keeps up with all the shootings in Chicago. Here it is. Just fire! Just fire! Just fire! You know. Oh, that, that's not, oh. <laughs> that wasn't it. That wasn't, he pulled up an RPG. That, that, that wasn't it. But <laughs> did you see the guy uh, in Texas with the RPG on the corner the other day? No. He had a shirt on that said ATF sucks, and he had RPG standing drinking a beer, <laughs> waving at people. Oh my god! I think this Body is, cam footage shows how an acorn spooked a Florida. Trying to find the whole fucking video. Messages. But fact, like when he heard what he thought was gunfire. Oh, Shut here it is. Yeah, cause he had on gloves. It ended up being the sound of an acorn hitting the top of his car. Hernandez then fired into his own vehicle at Jackson. The sheriff addressed the incident earlier this month in a video. Empties the entire magazine. I will admit that this was a very tragic. This was a fuck up for Mr. Jackson, and yeah. we are so grateful. I wish people would just say that. Man, these guys fucked up. Got a little spooked. Yeah. Fuck this one up, boys. He's uh, he's going to be helping pay for that back windshield. <laughs> yeah. He's paying for the back windshield, and the city will be writing that check for a million dollars. Oh, that's going to that's gonna cost their ass. Anyways, in Chicago, up to date, they've had 84 people murdered this year. Jeez. They've had 448 people shot. What gets me is how fucking terrible shooters. I know. I mean, that's but that one just goes in five. To show you, he emptied his magazine, and his partner emptied hers into, that, into the back of that squad car. Didn't even kill the guy. Never didn't even hit him. But, and then the guy said he got hit. I'm hit. I'm hit. I'm shot. Fuck, so you like, probably thought he did. That's uh, a turd in your pants. Yeah, that was a bullet turd. What? I'm not. I in the car. I am shot. God, I am shot. The, oh. He thinks he's shot? Yeah. He thought he's hit. He says I'm Man, hit. that guy doesn't need to be a cop. No. But I feel bad for his partner because she's just backing him up. Yeah. You know, he said yeah, shot. She's like, what the fuck do you mean no, he didn't shoot at us? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And this guy still thinks he's got I, shot. I'm, I'm good. I feel weird, but I'm good. He's yeah. going to be at MSNBC as an analyst. On uh, the next shooting. Yeah, no shit. And then, like, backup rolls up. They've got their ARs. and Jesus, what a shit show. <laughs> Poor fucker in the back seat's like, did you get I the fuck? Because <laughs> <laughs> he's thinking somebody else is doing no the shit. No shit. Man. They didn't even hit him, did they? I don't know. No, nobody got hit. <laughs> God, Still I bet when that sheriff had to, he was like, yep, yeah, what? 
I've got to give a press conference on this. What gets me is when they have these shootings, these fuckers that are standing around watching. I'm jumping on the fucking ground. I'm trying to crawl in a oh, hole. That's anytime something. That's that's another problem with society that we've got. Is like there could be a woman getting the shit stomped out of her, and everybody's just filming it. Glad you said that. There's a video right now. Roll up the video in New York of the illegal <clears throat> that tries to snatch the girl's purse. He snatches the wrong black lady's purse. Oh, she beat the shit out of him? She fucking dog in his ass. <laughs> and he's like, I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Dude, no those cops. illegal. Sorry, sorry. They're like, no it seems cops. like every other day now there's another illegal killing somebody. We went to New York City in May, me, Michelle, and Dylan, and I called and I asked. I said, listen, we stayed at Midtown Hilton. And I said, uh, what's the situation with the illegals there? Because I know y'all are putting them up in some hotels. Well, there's not a problem there. I said. Is it the 90-year-old woman? What is it? No, this is not like a name. young lady. She looks like a hairdresser or something. There was shit. one stabbed a 19 year old to death. Well, I this, think this one didn't stab. This guy tried to steal her purse on a scooter. <laughs> he got a hold of the oh, wrong she, woman. She was on a rascal scooter? No, no, like no, no, no. He was and tried oh, to grab her purse. and She wasn't having that. No, she fucking put him in a chokehold. That's and good. But all you do is see all these fucking guys filming it. Not one man. Oh, right. like that, what, what was that Marine that. Uh, yeah. Yes. Choked that guy yeah. out and he ended up dying, and now they're going to try yeah. to bury him under the yep. fucking prison. But I when I went to, so when I called in, in Manhattan and I said, hey, listen, we're staying there and bringing my granddaughter. Are, are we having trouble with the illegal stuff? I thought, I'm going to get another hotel if they are. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 sir. I know. I said, well, I know y'all are putting them up in some hotels. No, 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 no problem at all. Well, then when we got there and I'd been to Manhattan a couple of times and we stayed there, I understood. They fucking, who could tell us who was an illegal or not? Yeah. Nobody spoke English. Nope. Nowhere around. I don't think I can But I never did it. feel unsafe where we were except for one night. During the day, I never felt uncomfortable in Manhattan. But I won't think I'll go back to New York City for a long time unless I just got to catch a flight did out you, there. Did you go there frequently before or no. a few times? I've been there before a couple so, of times. So, like, is it a – I mean, I, I obviously, I would assume it is. But, like, you going there and seeing it firsthand, like, has it drastically changed through all these years? Yes. And, and, and I'll tell you how you can watch this if you want to see a deal – Watch a movie filmed in 1976 in New York City and then do one in 1986 and 1996. And, look and you at can the, see it. Just look at the background of everything there. Even in the 80s, people were all dressed up in Manhattan. They, they it was were like all business suit. people. and Yeah, and, and everybody worked and did stuff. And now you see now you see more street clutter than you used to. And it's that way and everywhere. Oh, Me yeah. and Michelle were in San Francisco two months ago. Ooh. And and I was absolutely scared for my fucking life while we ate. So it is as bad as they say. I had nobody rude to me, had nothing to do with what anything that I encountered personally. It was just the feeling around me and the vibe. We went and ate at a restaurant or a cafe, 730 in the morning, pouring down rain. And I was scared to fucking death. Someone was going to beat the windows out of my car and steal all her shit. I asked the lady. She's like, oh, you can bring your luggage in. Little Chinese lady. She goes, you can bring your luggage in here. You've never traveled, Michelle. <laughs> First of all, they'd have to have a whole other fucking booth just for her shit. <laughs> but I went out and got my bag that had my gun and my laptop in it and brung and set it with me. Then I started getting nervous because she told me, she goes, they'll just come up with tire tools and bust your windows out and steal all your shit out of your car. And nobody does shit no. about it. And, and then that's when I got scared. I go, we got to eat get the fuck out of here. She goes, do you see something? I said, no, because I don't think I have it in me to sit here while people steal our shit. No. Well, I have a gun in my pocket. Yeah, and then you're going to go to jail. Bingo. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was scared of is that I would have to pull the gun out. And then you're going to be the my guy. ass is going to go to yep. jail. I couldn't find that video, but did you see where this guy pulled a pair of scissors on a fella? Yeah, he fucked up. Fucks this guy up. I'm guessing they were having beef. He's like, sit down, cuz. <laughs> Pull some scissors. A pair of scissors. Boom, boom. Oh, he's sleeping. Not, not. That's what more people I knew need. That I, knew I knew that, that was coming. coming. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is, is the the DA in New York City, that crooked fucker, will will arrest that guy and they'll get file charges on him. The black now, guy. The only thing going for him is he's black. Yep. If he was white, they'd for sure do that shit. Yeah. But that's the way they do shit, and it's 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 crazy. I, I don't know about y'all. I'm still wondering where all this white privilege is. There is no white privilege. I've been looking for it. And there's not <laughs> there's not a working black man privilege either. No. Mm -mm. There's not it's privilege. Just a, it's a middle class privilege. There's not a, anybody that's out there busting their ass. There is no help for no, no help coming. Nope. At all. And you don't have an opinion. I guess that's why everybody likes listening to this kind of shit. Yeah. Even though we think we're just bullshitting around the table is the, like you said, not everybody's as fortunate as we are to live where we live. I mean, there there are disadvantages to being out here, but there's the there quality much. of life, the 
I mean, it's the feeling of safety is still there from an adult standpoint, and we worry for our kids. And maybe, it, maybe a lot of it is that we've gotten our our mindset skewed because we hear all the fucked up shit happening everywhere else right. in the nation. I mean, I don't ever hear like, have any kids been abducted and sold into sex slavery in Knox City or Haskell? I don't think so. No. We, but it's, we're all also proactive and not going to be the one. Oh, it'll never happen to us. It's, 800 kids in, in the United States of America go missing a year. 800 kids a year. And nobody fucking... Have you heard a politician say much about it? No. But, but it was no. a lot more in the 70s. They won't even talk about I the know. 80... They won't even We've talk about the 85,000 illegal kids that are missing. So you're telling me there was more kids come up missing in 1976? Jeff, we've today. gone through this. Yes. No, I still <laughs> yes. say your bullshit on that deal. Yeah. In the 70s, you were more likely to get abducted as a child. We've gone through it That's over and over again. There's more kids. Again. There's more people now. We've gone. We've gone through it over and over um, again. I don't know how many times I got to show you that graph. I still, <laughs> you to believe I, me. No, I still don't believe it. Um, I talked to. I, I talked to. I met Jeff's a, over here. Fake news. I'm, fake I, don't, news. I don't believe that. I met a guy <laughs> in uh, in the Metroplex the other day. Uh, Nice family set by us, and we were eating dinner, and we got to visiting. I do a lot of visiting, God Almighty. Oh, yeah. And you anyway, don't know anybody. that You don't meet a stranger. No. And so, anyways, this guy was telling me they live in Fort Worth, and he said, we've lived in the same house for five years. He said, when we first moved here, my kids, they had little kids. He said, the kids, they didn't even have kids. I mean, the kids played the neighborhood and stuff. He said, you know where I live now? He said, we sit out back side, out in our backyard. We got a fire pit, and we sit there. He said, we hear shootings every night now. Really? Yep. Fort Worth's getting to be a shithole. No shit. Yep. And he said, this is a nice place, but Fort Worth is getting really bad. And if you watch Smash the Topic on Facebook, which is a page I follow, mm -hmm. they go to every crime scene in the Metro. Oh, Lakes. yeah. You've told me about that. Fort Worth is getting is, is getting over No shit. shit. But he said, every night now, he said, I'm not talking about once a week. He said, every single night, if you sit in our backyard, you can hear some gunshots from somewhere. Every night. That's, and, that's like Haiti. <laughs> Top, Fort yeah. Worth used to be Texas. I mean, Fort Worth oh, yeah. it was in it New was, York. It was a country big city. Yes, and it's not that way no more. That's, that's Haiti. Uh, we were at a wedding last weekend, and we were talking to somebody, and they're like, "Yeah, we're going to the Dominican Republic." I'm like, "Have Ooh, you fucking shit. seen what all's going on?" It's yeah. not very far. Like, no. it's an imaginary line. Like, it, there's no ocean. There, it's yeah. just it's just Oklahoma to Texas, basically. Yeah. Yeah. There's a jungle there, and there's a jungle here. And by that tree, you're in a bad place. Emmett, tree, Emmett was working down there doing air ambulance shit. In the Dominican? Um, no, in Haiti. Oh, really? Yeah, he went down there two different times. And the last time he was down there, he won't be going back, I don't think. But the last time we was down there, he had ordered a new gun that came in, and I FaceTimed with him to show it to him because I wanted to open it. <laughs> but I wanted to be polite. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> open it up, and he's looking. He's like, oh, that's cool. He's like, hang on, hang on. And I went, what was it? That's gunshots, dog. And he ran out on the balcony because they had to stay in a compound, like all – Secured travel with security team, armored vehicle shit. When I mean, was this? How long ago was this? I mean, last month. Oh fuck! Recently, yeah, he so got like, out of, he got out of there at just the right time. I bet they pay pretty good though. I bet the combat pays pretty good. For yeah, this it's it's where it's you, not what it should be for down there. Where but, do you like fly into? Do you have to fly into the port, port of Prince, Prince, where the is shit that in is? Haiti. Yeah, that's the bad place where the fucking barbecue. That's where all the Clinton billions barbecue. got fucking yeah. laundered that nobody ever got. Yeah, man, and like he was telling me like. Like before he had gone down there, he's like, yeah, I guess like a couple months ago, like all the locals got tired of the gang members and mm -hmm. they all got their own guns and they just like fucking wrap tires around them, throw a, a little small cup of gas and light them on fire, burn them alive. It's like, holy shit. <laughs> it's like war zone down there, dude. But what is it about? Is it about the government corruption? I don't honestly know. The people have had enough. Yeah. They're, they're, they're what we're going to different situation but people in the united states have had fucking enough oh yeah then people for the last 20 Man, years got all their shit wiped out and they've got all this money that's going those people talk they know all this money's supposed to be coming to us and we're waiting for all this yep and they see all these fucking people like hillary clinton go down there and we got this we're going to build an orphanage and blah 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 and, and they, they fucking people have had enough of this when shit. was it was it when was it was an earthquake earthquake what is yeah, it thousand and five or something, something. it's a long time it's been 20 years yeah that was that whole thing was a check. big fucking mess it's but, all money laundering but yeah and and i don't know where it goes man like talk, going because you mentioned it a couple of times where it's and you even said it where it's like i know the reset how we fix it yeah but how ugly that would look oh yeah i mean You're it would be back to 1776 it would be horrific and the go because the government has become such this machine, they can control you that they couldn't do before. They yes. can cut they're your too, electricity off, big. your computers. We we let them get away. They they keep taking those inches, and every time we're like those motherfuckers, mm -hmm. those motherfuckers, those motherfuckers. Well, now we're fucking over two hundred years into this deal. Well, whoever's running it, they're almost two fifty now. They're not doing it just at a federal level because 
the lady that's the DA that's doing all this shit to Trump in Georgia. Yeah. She makes $110,000 a year. She's accumulated $10 million in wealth in the last couple of years. Somebody's paying her somewhere to do I, what I she's need doing. these kinds of tips. Yes. But but that, <laughs> but it's not it's not even a compute it's not even a stock tip. No. There's no stock going up that no. much. She's getting paid under the table for shit. And so it's it's not just corruption at the federal level. They've infiltrated all the state levels. Yep. Whoever's the mastermind of this is a fucking genius. Oh, for sure. There, but, this is the we're what we're witnessing right now is the the new version of conquering. It's the royal the world. family all over again. Yes, I mean it's like, and just like our border deal, this is not an accident. There is no, a reason, yeah. and I think yeah. the reason may be more complicated than even we guess. I don't know. I mean, it's, there's it's, more than just harvesting boats. A hundred percent. There, there is a fucking reason because this is this is causing crime spikes. Innocent people getting killed. Like there's normally when they try to do stuff a sneaky way, they do it sneakily. Right. They don't make it. This is way too in the spotlight for what they normally do. So they being the imaginary powers that be that we don't all exactly know what they are. Well, but, I can tell you who started this shit. It's fucking fat ass Oprah Winfrey. You why? think? Yeah, because she come out on her show. You don't think it's been and, and the she, plot has been older than that? Somebody fucking paid her big ass to do this shit. She come out and she said we need to get that congressman from Illinois, Barack Hussein Obama. He he would make a good president. And boom, guess what? We started seeing Barack Obama everywhere. That's where it all fucking started from. And she's in the middle of that shit. But it's all a controlled deal somewhere. You know, he was in England the other day meeting with the prime minister. Of I know, that's freaky. Uh, Joe Biden met with the Indian. Uh, that motherfucker's aging hard. Ireland. They say black don't crack, but <laughs> yeah, that fucker, he's, he's cracking. Our, uh, well, it's getting Big Mike getting into him all the time. <laughs> then... uh. The, uh, Joe Biden met with the uh, prime minister or whatever it is of Ireland. He uh -huh. resigned today. Really? Yeah, resigned. Flip. Don't know why. He just resigned today. He said, I'm resigning immediately, blah, blah, blah. We'll be there for a week or two, but y'all need to have a special election. Did Biden and them threaten him with something and blackmail him? Or Man, did he just know. Isn't Ireland in turmoil, too? They're having tons of problems there because they've brought in all them fucking carpet yep. dealers. No, I thought it was something else. I thought... A lot of their the problem... Ireland Republic or something like that. The IRA? Yeah. They've always had that problem. But their 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 problem is they bring a lot of people in that aren't our Irish. Oh yeah. Forever. You gotta think about this. For centuries, Europe was defined by the people that lived For in the sure. country. Poland is one of the few countries that has not let mass immigration come in. But we we Polish. were the only we were the mixing pot. Yes, those places did not mix. People didn't go there. There were mm -hmm. no opportunities. Those people were leaving those places to come here. Well, for years. Well, then in the last 20 years, all of a sudden, all the shithole in the Middle East decided to go north. Yep. Italy, France, Spain, England. And they're having hell. You, you look at uh I can't remember if it's London or one of those big towns. I think it was uh What's it? Dublin, Dublin, Ireland. I think's got a Muslim mayor, and that's the kind of problem they're having is they bring in all their shit and their Sharia law and stuff. And that's where we're headed. There's neighborhoods in France, the Paris, that the cops won't even go to because there's no controlling. They got all that Sharia shit going on. That's right. That's where we're headed if we don't fix this shit quick. And and it's not <clears throat> to me like I mean, obviously you're looking at three white guys here talking about this shit, and uh, our opinion doesn't matter. But to me, it's not even like it. It changes what the country was founded on, every one of them. So, like, the way it originally worked, it's like, let's say you hate American ideals. Fucking move. Leave. Mm -hmm. You got every opportunity. All these fucking Instead celebrities. Instead of trying to fucking change it. And the celebrities that threaten that shit. Well, if he gets a share. They don't fucking. Share. I'm going to leave if he doesn't. They don't ever you. even fucking, fucking overnight bag. Leave, <laughs> take your old ass. She's a fucking witch, too. You think? Fuck yeah. Cher looks the same as she did 40 years ago. <laughs> yeah, just a good plastic surgeon. You got to listen to Californication. Red Hot Chili Peppers tell you everything. Well, she's got whatever they fucking given her. They've got the serum works for her. Because yeah. I saw her on TV the other day and she looks like the same chair she did when she's in fucking Moonlight Have you seen or whatever. The hitting it was. meaning behind all the Californication? I did. I thought it was just a pop, just a catchy song. Evidently, like there's a bunch of like hidden Illuminati meetings in it. Like, oh, really? They're telling you everything. Do you believe there's Illuminati run shit? I don't know. Do you, I Eric? I. I don't know if it's as simple as that, but I do think there is something like that. Like the fact that George Soros was completely not a household name and now everybody knows that name is only because of the fucking internet. Do you have a dollar bill on you? Uh, I don't have a dollar. All I my got bill folds out in the you have a dollar? pickup. It's probably one of them dollars I gave the grandkids for their fucking vacation. <laughs> I got it, Jeff. <laughs> That's all that's left after that fucking... 
on uh, the dollar bill on the back of it, there's a pyramid with uh-huh. the eye in it. The all-seeing Why is eye? that there? I don't know. Um, why is that there? What what on is the back. what's the Latin over? Is it e pluribus unum there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know what that means. Uh, um, but why is there a pyramid with an eye? Why? What, I don't know. That's a, that's a Illuminati deal. They put that on the fucking dollar. They yeah. don't just put shit on a dollar bill. And that's like old school. Yes. That's been there a long so, time. What what's going on? Well, it's because it all goes back to the pyramids, Jeff. You gotta, I'm listening. So give me a reason. You gotta listen to you gotta listen to Cat Williams and Joe Rogan get high and talk about the pyramids. <laughs> Tell me the oh way out. God. But that dollar. Did you listen to that interview? Not yet. Oh, it was awful. But that, it was fucking terrible. <laughs> I I when we were in Mexico, so um when Cat Williams did his interview with Shannon Sharp and like all that shit was breaking, I was glued to fucking TikTok. My my family was out of town. They were with her sister in Tulsa. So like I had I had hours. <laughs> I was just from one fucking TikTok Cat Williams video to the next. Just he's spilling the beans on everything. So when I saw he went on Joe Rogan, I was like, oh, this is going to be fucking good. And it was terrible. <laughs> downloaded it on for the flight home. Uh, I was going to download it for the flight to Mexico. Something happened. Anyway, sit on the plane and like 30 minutes go by and like you can tell they're fucking baked. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know, it'll get good after a while. No, it never does. <laughs> Three <laughs> hours of just rambling. But, yeah, and it and it all ties back into the pyramids and <laughs> Well, I just want to know the dollar bill has got that I that everything else on it has a meaning. That's right. The Masonic Lodge George Washington was part of. Yeah. See, I have a hard time thinking some fucker was sitting in a fucking cave and scrolled out what they're gonna do with the United States after right. all, and we're still following that deal. Right. I just don't believe that. But there's the, the skull and bone. I mean, there's just so many things. Oh, yeah. And and, and back in the day, in, in 1945, you couldn't control shit. If you turned the electricity off, then people could survive. Yep. We couldn't, we could not go without electricity in this country a day. If everything mm-hmm. in the United States shut down for a day, it would shut down all transportation. Oh, yeah. You can't yeah. even pump fucking gas without electricity. Nope. People would be stranded everywhere. Um, how many people have how, enough food? Yeah, that's that was the other thing. Like the, the, what does a grocery store keep on average three days of food? Not much. <clears throat> well, you turn the electricity off. What's the first thing people do? They fucking start panicking, and then people start looting shit. So now that three days is going to be gone or destroyed or ruined because going, the freezers went off. I'm going up to M Systems, and I'm going to give them cash money. Yeah. And I'm going to buy every bit of pasta, beans, anything rice. Anything that'll keep. <laughs> anything that'll keep. Gatorade, stuff like that, and I'm going to store the shit behind a gun where nobody can get the shit and give them to my family because that's what's going to take. Californication. Because you got to have enough to have enough time yes. to get your own shit going. That's scary right there. The sun may rise in the east, at least it's settled in a final location. Earth's not round. They are surging very well to break the spell of aging. Celebrity skin is this your chin, or is that why you're waging? Space may be the final frontier, but it's made in a Hollywood basement. Space isn't real. In Cobain, can you hear the spheres <laughs> singing songs off station to station? And Alderaan's not far away, it's Californication. Born and raised by those that raise control of population. Everybody's been there and I don't mean no vacation. They were trying to tell you. Long time ago, everybody thought it was a catchy song. And Hard time getting my any kind of thing from Flea. <laughs> he did that he whole concert. He did that whole concert naked. You know. That's crazy though that how much they were on on that. The little girl from Sweden is That's, the only one. That That's was crazy. weird. It was right? weird. Yeah, the whole thing was fucking weird. It's like why? Right. And then why? Why did people praise that? I still don't know why she's even irrelevant. No, her and that little fucking hog kid. Oh yeah, the little goofy the, bastard, the gun violence chaser, yeah, David Hogg or whatever. He's his been name in is. like every mass shooting, hasn't he? Like mysteriously, he like he's an him. eye. I thought he was an eyewitness at some. No, at he was at the school no. in Florida. Oh, there, really? I don't know. What was the Florida school called? Was it? I forgot the name of it. I can't remember either. Yeah, and that's it, that's one of those things too, where like we have access to too much information yeah, now. Yeah, fucking way. So too you much. can think you're on the right track, and then you hear something that's a good argument against it, and you're like, "Fuck, is all that other stuff just made up or wrong?" And you imagine if Pearl Harbor happened today, some fucker would be Facebooking live and video and that mm-hmm. going on live. You'd watch it all. You'd live. watch it real time, and it wouldn't be people getting nose back and all that stuff was going on. And 
You know, there's a lot of conspiracy theory on all that too. On what? Pearl Harbor? Mm-hmm. How can there be conspiracy theories? You, you can that? look it up. There's a whole lot well, of I mean, things, they've almost, a lot of weird shit that was going they've on. They've almost then. proven that 9 11 was already predicted and that they did nothing, haven't they? Well, yeah, yeah. The guy that owned the World Trade Center took out a mysterious terrorist clause <laughs> look, look. like the day before. And you got Don Rumsfeld that comes on September 10th and says the Pentagon has $2 Trip. trillion dollars that we can't account for. It's gone. We don't know where oh, it is. Oh, they still do that shit. There's going to be a heavy audit. We're going to we're going to find they the money. Seven, uh, seven trillion recently or something like that. That well, was unaccounted for. The part of the Pentagon where they were going to do the audit. That's was, where it was. Was part of the Pentagon they got hit by the plane. Nine ten. Don Rumsfeld saying we've lost two trillion dollars. We can't find it. There's going to be an audit in the Pentagon. Next day, there's a plane that hits it. It's pretty fortunate for them, I guess. Paperwork Not for goes, everybody. Oh, and it was. Under, goes, uh, wasn't it being remodeled to a lot of it, so casualties were minimized. I don't know. Something like Dumb that. that part. Shit. Well, what's funny about that was the guy that owned nine eleven owned the Twin Towers. Him, his daughter, and his son, who they're at work every single day, all three of them mysteriously had something to do that day. The, uh, Biden just won the endorsement of the United States Steelworkers Association. How? So basically, how? Okay, because the lot, the people that are running it, the steel voters ain't voting for fucking oh, his the ass. Unions and the, un- the, yeah, union the union leaders. endorsed him. The steel workers ain't voting for his ass. That is how crooked the fucking Democrats are. And if you're a steel worker, you ought to hold your start holding your fucking people accountable. Yep. I mean, that's the problem. You start holding these fucking people accountable. I'm going to look up the... Uh, uh, have you seen that interview they were doing? I don't know what channel, what news outlet did it. I think I saw it this morning or yesterday. It's a, it's a black couple sitting there and they're, you know, you can tell they're successful in their workplace, stuff like that. And they're sitting there and... Uh, they go back and they're just asking them who each of them voted for. Mm-hmm. So it was like, oh, uh, I do, I think I oh, oh eight or whenever it was the first yeah. Obama, and they both voted for Obama, and then twelve Obama, twenty sixteen, the husband says Trump, yeah. and the wife says uh, uh, Hillary Clinton, and then for twenty twenty, no the no. who built them? The uh, for twenty twenty, no the husband no. says Trump. And the and wife says uh, Biden, and yeah. then they say for 2024, and they both say Trump. Both said Trump. It's so just, she's never yeah. been right. And, and now, if you look around the world, you see certain telltale things that let you know that advanced machinery was in usage. How do you know all this, first of all? Is this marijuana talk? I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> um, this is uh, this is like. Even Tesla says that this is where he came to get the information. But if you follow that information pathway, um, it leads you to this character called Thoth, right? Here's where it gets weird. And the emerald tablets um, of Thoth are literally mind-changing and mind-blowing just because you understand when this was written and the terminology being used is um when was it written far too accurate for now so it was this pace the uh, whole way yes. that would drive me crazy so oh, their, bra- their brains street, are at 20 percent. i can't i can't but handle pot people it. like this are baked it weird me out tablet but some people also think that he's afraid as the smart smargdine smargdine tablet or the tabula S- smar- All right, we've got enough of the podcast. He's blowing more smoke. Fuck that up. It's so fucking fake. So fake. This was like text. the one interesting it's part of the interview that I got. European alchemists as the foundation of their art, though attributed to the legendary Hellenistic figure Hermes Tris Trismegus. How do you say it, bro? Trismegistus. Trismegistus. Yeah. The text of the Emerald Tablet first appears in a number of early medieval. Arabic sources, the oldest of which dates to the late eighth or early ninth. Okay, century. we're gonna lose it people on this. In the Latin so- here, here, here's the thing: Cat Williams don't know nothing about the pyramids that nobody else knows. It's he not does. like no, it, he does. How? He's, you think that they he's, fucking he's, took some com- comedian? They said, I'll "Tell you what, we're gonna give you these secrets." Cat is enlightened, Jeff. Yeah, Cat's on dope. <laughs> I like Cat. I do. I, I like Cat. I'm a big fan of his. I think he's a smart guy, but he don't have nothing nobody else knows. He's a conspiracy guy, just like everybody else is. Right. I saw a video the other day, so it's gonna put me at the same level here now. But you're and how bank, big so. that fucking them 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 stones are? Yeah, they're, they're huge. fucking huge. Yeah, they're big. They're big as this room. Each mm-hmm. stone is. There is no fucking way with block and tackle, and five thousand slaves are picking mm-hmm. that shit up. I don't. Well, you think. had to mine them from where they come of, from, hundreds of miles away. Yeah, and then so now you, you got to drag them there. Okay, what kind of rope did they use to unblock and tackle to do this back then? <clears throat> 
The, I mean, what they have? Hemp rope? Yeah. I mean, how much fucking hemp rope did you need? The motherfuckers had to be big. Whatever they smoked. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but that, that's what I'm saying. It don't. Something happened in the world to lose all that technology. Yes. The fucking Romans had plumbing in their house, hot and cold water. But I mean, you've seen too, like how many, like of all the different religious texts and ancient scripts and stuff, like a a Noah's Ark flood happens in fucking of them. all of them. Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All of them. And then there's been like throughout history, all those, uh, you know, as the big conquerors rolled through, they would destroy that civilization. If they won, they destroyed all of their historical texts and documents. Yeah. Because they were full on conquerors. They didn't just want their shit. They wanted they to replace that entire like ideology well what's crazy is i saw a video today it was of a it was of a church in scotland we don't build churches like that anymore no this thing this was built in the 1300s yeah it's incredibly ornate stained yeah. glass everything's stained like perfect glass, they got crosses that were like etched inside the stones that they put them up and i mean the thing is fucking gorgeous it's still standing there was a, you go to the first church built in America, and I, don't, I bet it don't look that way. No, what do you, what do you mean? That you go to the church oh, built in the seven? It's made out of two by fours. We have cathedrals in New York, though. But, but and really some pretty ones, right? But I'm saying there ain't nothing like they had in the, those big monolithic churches yeah. that they had back right. in. That's why, like, I get like I'll get so enthralled and engaged into the all that sci-fi shit that they talk about. Like Sean Ryan's had a bunch of people on his about where they talk about that. Like maybe ancient people were more in tune with different dimensional mm -hmm. control and could use vibrations and things to make stuff move because that's the closest thing that explains how the fuck they move those big stones. Mm -hmm. We went to that church that's across from uh, the World Trade Center. It and what do they call that now? Uh, Trade One or whatever the new the new the new World Trade Center oh, building, yeah. whatever it is. Right across from it's the church that a lot of people stayed in. I think it's where they took the body of the um, fireman that the the well, the what do you call the chaplain that died there? I think that's where his body was. But it's an old stone looking church. Mm -hmm. It's it's neat, but it's nothing. Just absolutely just blows your mind. Then I go to a church in Newport, Rhode Island. We went to where uh, the Pope, me and Michelle, sat in the same place the Pope did, and Queen Elizabeth sat there, and other people, dignitaries, have stayed there. Not the Pope, uh, Nelson Mandela, but it's more like a what you would see from the 1700s. Yeah. Well, we ain't nowhere on the scale of what they find if you go to Scotland or England. Right, and we have the day. technology now to should yep. be able to mm -hmm. do it ten times easier than the, it was the, then. The, the, the stones on the pyramid were six to ten tons. Yeah, six to ten tons. That's when big, you get to the top, now. when you get to the top, they they lighten the load. They're about one one point three tons. You How go, are you gonna fucking move that? You you can't. That's what that's what something and, happened. And the other thing, why? Well, they say it's. Uh, if you listen to this, if you can get through the Cat Williams interview, um, it was a way of communicating with the extraterrestrial because oh. everything lines up with stars in the sky. Like, and he, yeah, he I, did, a, I did know that he had another interesting thing. He's like, there's no lights in there. He's like the, 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 the rooms in this place, there's no windows. How many rooms are in them things even? I don't know, but he's like, there's no evidence of candles or anything else. So he's like, they had a way of illuminating this place at night. I didn't know that they used it for anything. I thought it was just a tomb. Well, evidently there's like a river or something. Yeah, they're starting to it. they're starting and to think that it was some sort of way of supplying places with water or some shit too. I think there's a river underneath it because they're right off the Nile, all of them, right? I think so. But they had hot water in Rome, hot water, hot water. You can go to fucking the hills in Arkansas or West Virginia, yeah. and them motherfuckers still ain't got hot water. No, but they had hot water back then. They took water from a thousand miles away on the aqueducts in Rome and pumped them into town. The Roman Colosseum, they had battleships in there. They used to put on fake battleships with ships. They could flood that thing up and have boats really? fight in there like Las Vegas. And then they could drain it and move them out of there. Damn. I mean, that's that's amazing engineering. I mean Without our, without near the materials no, that we need. Our planes Indians at the time, they're still dragging motherfuckers behind on sticks. Yeah. And these fuckers are putting battleships on water because when they were doing all that in Rome, the Indians were over here. Yep. You can't find any kind of modern civilization that the Indians left. No. None. There was, yeah, not in America. It was all, you know, like South America, <clears throat> Mexico, all of those civilizations, but they were still pretty primitive. They just had Tulum, buildings. 
Tulum and Chichen Itza in the on the May, on the Yucatan Peninsula, uh-huh. they were pretty modern on a lot of shit because a lot of their things line up. But they've got pyramids too. They do, and but the, but they line up a lot of stuff there. I don't know. They supposedly they had flying machines too then. Yeah. Good old North America, the the power of the world right now. We start. We were a little late to the party. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we there was still- a, obviously there was a technology a long time ago that we've lost. Well, it's I just- mean, even if you like, if you go back to the cathedrals and the stuff that's in Scotland and the great the great structures that they built thousands, hundreds of years ago, like we've lost something. We've lost a technology. We've lost a way of thinking. Something. And like Nikolai Tesla had developed a way to distribute. Energy free electricity without wires mm-hmm. through the air for yeah. free, yep. and and then he was funded, I believe, by the Rockefellers, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. And when he came to them, like, hey, I figured this out. This will change the entire world. Everyone in the world will have electricity. They cut the funding. Do you think they yeah. cut the funding because they didn't want any poor people to have it, or do you think it was a control deal? Because they I, it may have been both. Because can't make money on it if it's free. Right. Because back then, me and Andy went to a place this year. We went to. Um, was Bolt Castle? Yeah. It's, it's in the St. Lawrence River. We went there, and those the guy that owned that was the general manager of the Waldorf Story in New York, and he was from up in this area, and he had a lot of money too. And he, but he probably knew and, everything history. Well, he built a castle, a big, beautiful place on the St. Lawrence River, and for his wife, and his wife died like six months before they were going to move in. He oh, never, he, he never even went to it, but he was friends with Tesla. Tesla was going to build a power because back then you had your own power plant at your house. Like the, like the Rockefellers, they had their own power plant at their house. They generated their electricity for their house so right in their backyard. Worry about shit. Well, that's the, what's the way it was. There was no public yeah. stuff like that. Anyways, this guy was going to build one at this castle. That was the plan. He had, he befriended him. He lived in New York and knew him and stuff. And that was part of it. But I always wondered about the, I don't, I don't, I have a hard time with the wireless electricity. Yeah. That's, that's the that's place. Bolt Castle. Good Lord. Guy never lived there. Never went in there. That's not even the castle on the right. That's the uh, that's the castle. Yeah, that was the, that was the boathouse. This is the boathouse. That's where you pull up to. Yeah, Ca- Jeez. castles back here. He had like an observatory. He had all sorts of stuff. Very very neat. Place. You need to take your wife there. That's one of the neatest place. See that little house on the, it's, it's, the, the and little, you can tour it now yeah, or yeah, what? Yeah. See that that little house on the island. Yeah, it's called the Thousand Islands. Every little island's got a house on it. Just about. There's some, that's there's where some the places. poor people live, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that's where he put it. That was his mother in law's house. He built her a house. He built his mother in law house. So that's the mother in law cottage. But we went all through that and stuff. But, anyways, they, they were having a wedding when it's we were there. Billionaires Row. Yep. Millionaires, yeah, millionaires to, Row. Because it was millionaires they, they row. named it in the early teens. A lot of people that <clears> built, we went to one house that was there. It's beautiful. It's, I, I recommend anybody take their family there. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Um, the two of the the Straub guys that died in the Titanic, the twins, uh-huh. uh, Strauss, Strauss, they 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 have a house there, and they do. But a lot of these houses burned down during the Great Depression because they had them insured. These people <laughs> burned their houses down, and then they found <laughs> no out shit. That the insurance companies were broke and they couldn't pay them. So oh, they burned God. their house down for nothing. That's disheartening. Yeah, turns out the insurance company don't have any money either. So <laughs> yeah, well, you just burned your house down for nothing. I don't know if that's changed much since they hike rates anytime you do <laughs> anything. Every every. It's just these big, beautiful homes all over the place. But it's the, the St. Lawrence River runs right through there. It's it's one of the prettiest places I've ever well, been. What were they going to do? They had like a power station at they, Bolt Castle. They had a power station. They would make their own power just for that place. And that's what he was going to do. And then he, that didn't happen. That's because, crazy. But that's what all the big people in New York did. If you lived on Park Avenue and you lived in the big houses, when they first got electricity, it was only like... You know, a very few one percent of the people there had it, but they had the power plant built right on their house, and that's what they did. It. They didn't have commercial like Con Edison right. electricity, but there was definitely a big battle between Edison and Tesla over one of them was AC and one of them was DC. At t- Tesla's power source was a lot safer than Edison's was, but Edison had gotten into he had, he, he also he did Kodak, position. didn't he? I think he did the first motion pictures was Edison, and I think he did a uh, Kodak like cameras and stuff. He was Kodak too, and so he but he came up with the first motion pictures too. Huh. I but, didn't know that. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure he invented all that stuff or, or the first one to really bring it out. Yeah, Eastman Kodak did Kodak, but I think he might have bought him out. He was a real dickhead, they say. Yeah, was, it sounds like I mean, because I mean, how many you we've all heard those stories like the guy who. Came up with the way to power an automobile off of water, and he committed, he got suicided, you know, and then 
I mean, shit like that, like getting the funding pulled on anything that would be game changing. And it seems like now, like there's no major breakthroughs anymore outside mm. of this kind of shit. Yeah, that's you know, all it is. That's a computer a, that's, chip. That's technology. the technology that we're in. Or that's, that's but there's no major like, and and I don't know if it's <clears throat> that we're too simple minded as a society to come up with anything more extravagant than that. But I mean, can you imagine horse and buggy days, the invention of a combustion engine, mm -hmm. how mind blowing that would be to go and look at as simple as the first ones were, mm -hmm. you know, you're cranking the front of that shit game changer. Like nothing that has been that innovative since. Mm -hmm. I wish everybody would I don't go, know what, but everybody that likes history needs to go watch Downton Abbey. Cause there's a lot of history in that. And then they need to watch the Gilded Age. The Gilded Age, I really like. It's 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 on Amazon Prime also. It's kind of a spinoff of Downton Abbey, but it's in America, all of it. And it talks about all, a lot of this stuff. But this last year, they touched on going to a house when they did the lighting for the first time. Oh, God. Because it was, and it's, it's. I think it's based on some Vanderbilt family. I, I bet, I mean, they were watching Pure Magic. Yeah, everybody, mm -hmm. they, Pure it, Magic. It was a big deal Come out and which oh, Edison's, or Tesla's going to start, you know, yep. when they're going to do it. And then boom, they at, at seven o'clock at nighttime, all the lights come on. And then all around the house, they have lights and stuff. And it's, it's an amazing yeah, thing. Because it's like, no longer do you have to light candles to see, watch this. <laughs> well, flick. <laughs> back at that time, they had gas and propane lanterns and a lot right, of houses. but it was all fire based so yes. you're you're having heat. you had to light it you had heat yeah. with light and now watch well, i bet those light bulbs got hot as fuck back then but yeah and they probably lasted more than fucking six months yeah, and they actually probably. could read something on them yeah. i wonder if eyesight's gotten better over the years worse like, you, you has, think so has worse to yes you think because so? like they, back I in the day I, you had like if you wanted to read at night or anything like you had a little squinting well i mean how talk, how far back are we going if you want to go back to when I was a kid in the '60s, fuck no, we had lights, light gonna, bulbs at work. I'm gonna go to. <laughs> I'm gonna. When when was the first light? When the first light? 1915, come on? 1910. But, so I'll they, go to 1850. Oh well, yeah, because you were you were reading by. Uh, That's how candle. far back I was going. Yes, uh, yeah, it probably has, but but at the same time, like that's a natural occurring, like a uh, Kelvin rating of light or whatever, a naturally occurring tone. And they were all warm tones, more orange. Mm -hmm. And now look at all this shit around us. Everything's yeah. LED. Everything's white. That yeah. fucking, and them things don't light up. You take an old light bulb from 1976 and light it in this some bitch, you'd see some places but you it, need to paint. But it makes fix. you wonder though, like for the way we're made, like is that? I don't even know if they've done studies on it to be honest. But like we're constantly looking at screens that are all LED yeah. backlit, so our lighting isn't orange anymore. It's like a white or yep. blue. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's bad for you. I don't know. Shit. You go talk to my optometrist. She told, she chewed on my ass last time. For what? what? Screen time and this and that. <laughs> Good luck getting around that. And then I told her, she goes, well, how far do you read at? I said, usually about right here, you know. <laughs> and now fucking glasses work good there, but my laptop's this far and I can't fucking see it. I take my glasses and move them down to see what I'm reading. <laughs> they uh, say that blue light from your phone, is it fucks with like everything. I it think it, with your it's, sleep pattern, yeah, your it circadian like, like rhythm or whatever. To, you're not supposed to look at it in a dark room. You're not the, supposed to look at it before bedtime for sure. Well, they put that night mode on there, but it annoys me because it looks stupid orange. Yeah. The hist but history is, we're living through some weird shit. Back to the deal I said about Pearl Harbor. One of the conspiracy theories is, is that a lot of industrialists knew that it was fixing to happen. Now, at the time, we were already in war with Germany. Yeah. And they were pumping money left and right, building shit to fight against the Germans. Then we got in the fight with the with the Japanese, and mm -hmm. I think that's where the biggest downfall in our country is. I'm not talking about World War II in general because that was the greatest generation, and those men fought that for was, our freedom. The yeah. greatest, toughest generation ever. There's no doubt in my mind. But I think that's when the recipe for we can stay rich and tax the shit out of the American public and make them pay for the world was the war machine. Because I think that's really World War II is when the war machine started. Oh, yeah. And that was because uh, historically – Whenever a war was over, the army decommissioned a bunch, and they like we we weren't at the state of readiness that we stay in now. I don't think like our army, our our armed services, and all the military now stays war ready at all times. Back in the World War days, they had all the women were you know rolling their sleeves up to go start building shit because we weren't. One of my grandmas was Rosie the Riveter. She right. was in Wichita, Kansas, at Boeing building right. the B twenty nine. But they, they don't have to do that shit now no. because it's the war machine is well, constantly there, powered. Well, there was no readily available men then. Could you imagine living in Knox City or Haskell town back then? Probably both towns probably were about three thousand people, if I'm guessing. Probably maybe four thousand. They right. were both vibrant little self. You know, everybody lived within their own community. Could you imagine being that guy, twenty five years old, that's not fighting? And 90% of the town's oh, gone. Man. 
Everybody look at you like the biggest coward. Yeah, you know, what's going on here? Why yeah. aren't you, you know? Yeah. It's, you know, the Pacific. Did you watch the end of that finally? No. Oh, that's a great series. Have you seen that? No. -uh. Oh, that's great. It's on, it's on Iwo Jima. There's a kid there. His his dad's a doctor. Oh, and so he got skipped over. No, he, he wanted to go, but his dad kept, his dad was the local doctor, and he kept writing him off that he had a heart murmur, a heart murmur. And this kid was upset. He was depressed. He wanted to fight. All his friends were fighting, and he wanted to go fight. Then he went. When he came back, he was never the same person. He right. Back. Thanks for ruining that. Oh, I'm sorry. But anyways, it's- <laughs> I'm a, still waiting to see if he's going to live or not. Oh, well. Anyways, it's he, just, His dad told him before he goes, he said, I guess his dad lived through the First World War. Yeah. And he said the worst part about seeing the living come home is that there was nothing- there anymore they're dead their souls like, were dead he said i don't want to see that in my son i so cried I'm, I'm assuming that's what he sees whenever I, he comes I, home i'm fucking bald i'm telling you i cried in that. every series i cried but the last one god i bawled and bawled and bawled really bothered me because i'm getting older yeah yeah your dad's the same way he's a lot more emotional than he used well, to be i think you, as you age you you begin to grasp how precious life is yeah there's not things that's not as important that used to make exactly. you mad as they used to some yeah. things still make you mad but a lot of things that, that would really irk me and stuff don't don't. Yeah, especially like compared to being in your low twenties where everything makes yes. you fight mad, and now then you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I don't. It's like, oh, somebody talked shit about me. Okay, yeah, th th stuff like that don't get mad. They're I, retards. I, yeah. see, <laughs> I see more victims in the world than I do people that. Oh, everybody's that are, a victim yeah. now. Well, no, no, no. I see more people that have bad things happen. Oh, I, can't I go, see what you mean. I can't Needle go, break. I you can't, notice yes, it. I, oh yeah, it just kills me. Going to a grocery store with Michelle just wears me out when I see poor little families and they're trying to figure out how they're yeah. gonna pay for shit. Um, we. we Went and got a pedicure yesterday and a manicure, and a little lady was wanting to get her daughter. Well, how much would it cost to her? We we paid for it. Yeah, you know, she didn't know that, but we paid for it just because it was something that yeah. eight, eight fucking dollars for a kid to get her nails painted. But just little things like that. But to that person, that might have been the yeah. difference in dinner. Or yeah, not or but something. as you get older, you notice. Yeah, and I think that's just common. But the the war machine definitely fired up after World War Two, and it was they found out it was profitable. My grandpa told me that he when they come back and they decommissioned his ship, and I got the the flag that come off the ship he said they threw away binoculars guns just threw them in the ocean didn't need them no more so instead of piling them up and using them for the next time or something it's well just... they didn't want the if something ever happened to go to war they didn't want the japanese to come in and get all the guns or something i guess i don't know but he said they did all kinds of stuff i've seen videos from vietnam where they take them helicopters and they drop them off in the ocean that's crazy well, they just left it there in afghanistan so yeah that was yeah. the stupidest shit but back in now them days we didn't give them to the enemy they right. threw them over now, the ocean now we gift wrap them yeah. they probably took all the padlocks off before but they that's left. what the russian the russians gave the afghanis that's why we all that's why when we first went over there they were using ak's we're gonna be yeah, but they were all super old and yeah. probably didn't have any rifling left in the barrels. And now they've got night vision shit. Yeah, Afghanistan shit. is going to be a war in 2125. They're still going to be fighting in Afghanistan. Never going to stop. Shit. No, I've, I've always said, and I've said it on this thing a thousand times, give them a bunch of nuclear weapons that shoot three miles. <laughs> yeah. And just done. fucking just shoot each other Thanks. up to wipe the whole place out and be done. Pull, pull a Ron White and go mm -hmm. fix it up and flip it. Do yeah. you listen to the Sean Ryan show? I, I, I don't. Do. I don't. But I did recently listen to one. It's a. It's an older one. It's one of his first ones. DJ Shipley. I'd have it's, to look. It's what? episode number fifteen. It's like a four. It's like three or four years old. That fucking guy. Holy hell! Toughest individual. Toughest story that I've ever heard in my life. Ex, ex Navy. He's the. He's the uh, youngest person to graduate from Buds. Mm -hmm. He's like nineteen. Like his senior year of, of high school, he was he was in SEAL training. Is this the guy that called out the NFL players? <clears throat> I don't remember hearing that. Probably not. I don't There's know. a Navy SEAL that come out and was these guys were talking about how tough they were and this shit, and he was got into bickering with some. Oh about, no, I think it's the guy. I think it's that Navy SEAL we had on the podcast, Jimmy Watson. Sean Strickland, the UFC fighter, said that there's no that's, Navy that, SEAL. That's what it was. It was a UFC. It wasn't an NFL fighter or yeah. NFC guy said or NFL that, guy. Said that Navy SEAL guys are not as tough as MMA fighters. And Anyway, we had that guy <laughs> on the podcast. But DJ Shipley, fuck around. Just some of the stories that he talked about over there and just the abuse that his body took. I don't oh, know how yeah. he's fucking stand Dude, it. There's, he's got tons of guys that have done that on this show. Yeah. I mean, where you just listen to their stories, like, God dang. <clears throat> but that's what America was built on. And, like, you know, you look at World War II and... The problem is, though, back then, it was like you could take, like normal guys off the street and they would all step them not all of them i'm sure there were a bunch of people who were scared shitless and they had pride in corners but yeah they stepped up because it was their duty first of all let's be fair and honest you take 18 year old kid in 1945 oh god and you take an 18 year old kid in 2024 give him a 28. first of all 
Give them 10 extra years. Half and the, it ain't even the same. Half the kids today that graduate high school can't run a fucking mile with having to stop and breathe. Right. Mm-hmm. Back then, everybody could fucking run a mile. Maybe I would, I would lower that. I bet more than half can't run a quarter. Yeah. Can't run. Back then, everybody, everybody was thin. That's back to when I, you talked about New York and stuff. Yeah. Look at the sides. Look at any kind of show. You, I love watching old movies built made in the 60s and 70s. Everybody's thin and good looking. Oh, yeah. Everybody is. Everybody's wearing a suit. They look nice. They're thin. I'm a fat guy. And I'm telling you right now, Everybody was thin. Everybody. The only it people that were fat were rich people back yeah, then. That, mm-hmm. that really, really, really rich or really fucked up people. Yeah. There wasn't no in betweens. Yeah. No. You know. And when I was telling, I've told Andy and them, you take little league football, baseball fields. You can pick up any little league. If you look up someone, show me your 1976 little league team pitcher. Everybody can wear everybody's uniform. Might yeah. be a kid taller or shorter. Might be one fat kid. He was a catcher. Yeah. But that was it. <laughs> Nobody else. And and nowadays, fucking, there's no skinny people. Mm-mm. You know, like I said, back to Victoria's Secret. Some fucking mannequins have gained 100 pounds. <laughs> so I walked out for that part. They're making the mannequins bigger? Oh, fucking fat asses. <laughs> Everybody, that's what I noticed. I told Michelle, I was like, God dang, look at that. She's like, what the, look how fat the mannequins are. <laughs> She's like, I don't think you can say that. I said, fuck, I am. <laughs> yeah. they, don't have, they don't have hard nipples, and they're fat. Just round, soft, yeah. soggy nipples. Yeah, like they made a movie <laughs> called The Mannequin back in the late 80s about a guy falls in love with some mannequin, turns into a person, stupid oh, fucking shit ever. <laughs> but nowadays, it'd be fucking two-ton Tessie. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where it's all headed, but it's it sucks to watch. I mean, but I mean, did growing up, did you guys ever think like this? No. Okay, so it's, it's not it's not just a so continuous phenomenon. My, my buddy Lewis Henderson told me, and it was when I I, I remember How old is, watching, is Lewis in his seventies. Lewis is about seventy. I'm gonna okay. say he listens to this, so he'll call me up and tell me exactly how old he is. I'm but, 69, you <laughs> fucker. <laughs> but let, let's say let's say Lewis is is Lewis is 15 years older than me, probably. Right. So I'm gonna say he's 70. Lewis told me that when Jimmy Carter was in office, he thought it was the end of the world was happening. Okay. Inflation was sky high. It's just, he says it was bad. Makes me feel better. So, and, and, that, and I've thought about that many times because we've gone through cycles in our country. Yeah. But we were still patriotic America. Yeah. And that's the problem we don't have. We don't have any respect. And these young kids think they're all fucking victims. Yep. In 1976, you weren't a fucking victim. No. You just need to get off your ass and things are tough. Yes. That's the difference. The bootstraps. Yes. Yeah. Like John F. Kennedy, it's not what you can do for your, what your country can do for you. It's what you can do for your country. Well, now it's fucking opposite. What can oh. your country do for you? And it's, it's fuck the neighbors and yes. not help your fellow man. Yes. And, and film so, them getting stomped and yeah so that that's the difference so but i so don't, it's, it's the it's not the government's still doing their same stupid shit back and forth but it's it's the society as a whole's viewpoint on life i guess you didn't have safety nets right i grew up with no money at all my parents never had any money i never had anything extra in my life that i remember but i also don't remember anybody bitching and whining about it right i mean nobody i went to school at a very poor elementary i get in trouble with some kids i went to elementary because i caught a white trash elementary boy i've caught some shit over that from some kids <laughs> but it's fucking true yeah everybody was it was a poor it was white kids and mexican kids and we were poor but we would beat your ass in any fucking sport you right. played at because we and we didn't it wasn't a welfare school right it was poor people that worked everybody at my elementary was the same way i, I don't know of any kid in my school that was on any kind of government assistance. There probably was, but there wasn't much government assistance. Well, and back then it was embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Bingo. People had pride and you worked. But if you took that same school I went to now with the same neighborhood and the same shit, half the kids there would be on some kind of welfare. Oh, school. yeah. And mom and daddy wouldn't want to work. But see, and the other thing, too, was the mindset of welfare where it was like people would get on it, but it was mm-hmm. last the last straw. Like, yep. they, I, I haven't been able to feed my kids for four days. We've got to do something. And they would only get enough to get by until things got better. And now here we are where it's like, I deserve that money. I you told know, uh, that's that is rightfully mine. That's the whole mindset. Instead of being embarrassed about it, it's like, oh, hell yeah, I'm getting mine. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's the the COVID deal changed so much with people getting free shit. Oh, bad. Because everybody was wanting free shit. Fucking we, we got it as a business. Andy and them got a business. You probably got it. Yep. You know, everybody's like, well, it was free. Well, it wasn't free. We had to shut down by the government told us we had to shut yeah. down, you know, and we all got paychecks and every employee got a paycheck because we got that money. Otherwise, right. nobody got shit. Right. But people are different now. And, and, and this is scientific and this doesn't matter. And I still can't understand this. When the tornado hit in 1979, it wiped out our cafeteria, it ripped the roof right off our cafeteria. The other school, elementary and school that, that was two miles from us, it completely leveled it. So we went to school in the mornings. Those kids came to school in the afternoons at our elementary. Oh. So we had to go to school half a day. We had no windows in our school. We had no air conditioning, and we had plywood stuck over every window. Oh, God. We had fans. I don't remember being hot. I'm sure it probably was sometimes, but, but I don't remember you, it. 
But you know what we had for lunch? We had peanut butter and syrup sandwiches and peaches. Every day for lunch. That's what we had. Dang. Could you imagine serving peanut butter to fucking school today? Oh. Can't now. Half of them would have an allergy to it. Why? What I happened? I don't know. We're talking 1979 to 2024. That's 45 years. So in 45 years, a human body's got where they can't have a fucking peanut? Yeah. And I know people <laughs> legitimately are allergic. I'm not saying it's right. bullshit. That's oh, yeah, kill them. But I don't understand that. No, it's weird. In 45 fucking years. It's fucking weird. <laughs> you can't even take a Reese's peanut butter cup to school, can you? Mm-mm. No, nothing with peanut butter. You can't take it to school? Fuck no. no. They'll fucking... Because some no, kid there is allergic to it. And if they touch it, then they're screwed. I, even if, like, the if like somebody <clears throat> eats peanut butter and, like, their saliva, they talk, and the peanut... Or shit, cough on them or something. Like, it's a that's anaphylactic crazy. shot. But I'm talking every fucking kid in my school had peanut butter and syrup sandwiches. No problem. They didn't send no waiver out. Hey, can your son not have peanut butter? None. That's weird. That was that uncommon, but now it's that common. We had a... Uh, that's because the response has been wrong. I'm not disagreeing with that part, but I don't understand where the human body changed that much that fast. Right. Where people all of a sudden said, whoa, 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 we can't have a kid peanut butter. Well, it's just like anything. Instead, we did what we did with COVID. It's okay, you're allergic to peanuts, completely annex it. So now enough generations have gone with no exposure to peanuts because of this peanut allergy to now it's it's fucking life or death if they are if they come in contact with something peanut. Whereas the response should have been, Let's build up immunity. Yeah. Well, here's my, the fact, here's another argument to that where I think a lot of it is bullshit. You go through a fucking grocery store, do you know how much fucking shit Reese sells now? Them motherfuckers got cereal. They got 14 <laughs> different kind of cups with all kinds of shit in yes. it. Yes. They've got seasonal shit. They, they got, got eggs every at Easter. fucking yeah. thing. So somebody's still buying peanut butter shit uh, because like there's it. a ton of it. I like peanut yeah, butter. I love it. That's the, and Reese's are probably my favorite if I had to, I don't, that's what I would eat. Oh, yeah. That or a Snicker bar, which yeah. has got peanuts in it. Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I can't imagine a fucking kid who's got peanut allergies with the fuck they have for candy. <laughs> crunch bar. <laughs> Just sugar. It's like, what do you, I guess they can eat corn to decorate their turds, but bar, there ain't going to well, be a peanut yeah, in it. Crunch bar's got rice in it, don't it? Yeah. But I mean, you can't, there's fucking peanut butters in, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. I had, uh, I bought the grandkids. You don't know this yet, but you're fixing to find out. I ordered a deal <laughs> off of some yum yum or something's the name of it. They sent a snack box to the house once a month. With candy and snacks from foreign countries. Oh, cool. So, like, next month, it's from Nicaragua. So, it's all candies that people just get in Nicaragua. And I got it for the grandkids for the summer. I got a year of it. And so, every time they come over, we'll try a new month. And yeah. grandkids will love it and stuff. But uh, I was talking about it at the nail place yesterday. Me and Michelle are really good friends with these Vietnamese people that <laughs> do our stuff. Anyways, the lady Crystal goes, it's Crystal T's in Abilene, too. Plug for them. They do a good job. So, anyways, Crystal goes, oh, hold on, Mr. Jeff. And she comes over and she brings... They gave me a, it was a cake with a, an egg cream in the middle of it. She goes, see if you like. It tastes like a fucking Twinkie. It was good. Really? It's three ingredients in the whole fucking thing. There ain't, there ain't, there's more no. than three in a Twinkie. Fuck yeah. You look at there's so much as that long. Three fucking you ingredients. You see all that shit it. where they show how like the, the foods mm-hmm. and candies in other countries yeah. that are the same foods. Yeah. Ours have like double the ingredient yeah. list. It was like egg, sugar, and flour. It yeah. might've been four or five, but I mean, that was, it was and real simple. Over, over there, they, they ban all the shit that's legal here. Yeah. Like they how, showed oatmeal. Canada. They showed like oatmeal. It's like rolled oats, raspberries, honey. That's it. Here, it's fucking a list of shit you can't pronounce. Red dye 42. Yeah. Dextra cockafrin or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> Dextra cockafrin. And then it's, but... Uh, Oh, it's but our government, because our lobbyists, because them fucking blackmailers in the Washington D.C. But we're worried about fucking what's Charles Schumer. Worried about you guys taking Zins. Yep. Because Philip Morris, I get, who makes those? Uh, some Chinese company, probably. So, well, no, I, I mean, I'm, I me. was serious though, because it's not one of the tobacco companies here aren't making them because they wouldn't be pushing them if they were. Uh, Swedish Match NA LLC out of Richmond, Virginia. When we talked about Red Bull this earlier, is Rogue Holdings out of Jacksonville, Florida. So it's some private companies are doing. Okay, we talked about Red Bull earlier. Yeah, Red Bull was developed by a guy in Austria, correct? Is that right? Ooh. Or Taiwan? Uh, sure. I don't know. The, the only reason story. I know is our Formula One teams fighting over who's got control because it's fifty-one to forty-nine, but they're a <laughs> multi-billion-billion oh, yeah, dollar huge. corporation. Huge. East they just, Asia. East Asia. So it's in Taiwan. They've got enough money to sponsor a guy jumping out of outer space and coming into yes. orbit with a fucking parachute. Like, And they're that, not getting any extra sales at all out of that. No. It just continues to feed the I need the Red Bull mindset. Like, I, 
We Red get, Bulls are for badasses. Is all they're trying to portray. We got like the Marlboro Man. We we got we have yeah. sponsors and we give them something in advance. They're going to sell more stuff and it's a and it helps. I understand that. Coca Cola, biggest company in the world for drinks. Yeah, Red Bulls probably number two now or Pepsi. I don't know which one of two. But anyways, let's say Coca Cola is still the number one in the world. If Coca Cola did not advertise for a month. I bet their sales wouldn't go down a bit. I bet they wouldn't either. No. I think the most genius thing that Coca-Cola does is sponsoring out sports venues. Mm -hmm. They sign a title sponsor or whatever deal that they do, and then that's the only thing that can be sold there legally. Like, that's that's about the only thing. If they stop doing that, they may have some – but that's only for single events. Mm -hmm. You know, like, that's only things that are at AT&T Stadium or whatever. You know who don't sell Coke products? Bucky's. Really? I noticed that the other day when hmm. we were there. They don't have any? They have Dr. Pepper. They have Pepsi, Sprite, or whatever is what is Coke, Sprite, Coke Pepsi. and Sprite. Okay, they had Dr Pepper. They have Sprite. They've got Bucky's Cola, and they got Bucky's Cherry no Cola, shit. and Bucky's Vanilla Cola. And I started looking. I didn't see no Coke. You could look it up. I I don't drink that much Coke, so I right. don't know. But I did not see Coke, and I because I thought to myself, I said, I bet they don't have a deal with Coke. They're in the own, they're in the own game. Yeah, like Bucky's Pe Cola, Taco Bell is the same Bushies. way. Taco Bell Bushies. don't sell Cokes. They sell Pepsi products. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. Pizza Hut's the same way, I think. I yeah. hate going somewhere like, oh, if you do get a Coke, oh, we don't have Coke. Yeah. I like Coke Zero. Yeah, I do too. But, they, but yeah, they don't have they don't have that at Bucky's. Um, That's like, and if somewhere's Coke only, and you're like, I want a Dr. Pepper, and like, we got Pib, yeah. it's like, it's not the same, but whatever, yeah. close enough. Um, Jimmy Buffett, when we'd go to his concerts, rest in peace, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy would have, uh, the only beer that sold there was Land Shark, his beer. Yeah, it's his beer. It makes sense. But we would go to, we'd go to the... Pizza Hut Park in Frisco. Mm -hmm. Pizza Hut's got to deal with Pepsi. Yep. Nothing but Jimmy Buffett beer. Oh, no shit. Yeah. That was so, all that was there. When, when, last two times we've seen him there. I don't blame him. Fuck no. <laughs> so I got a beer. I'm going to sell it. Yeah. Do you understand the no cash deal? No. That wears me well, out. I know, I know why it's happening. Oh, the more control. Yes. But... Like, but I don't, I don't appreciate it very much. <laughs> me, and Michelle, me, me and Michelle went and seen Kenny Chesney two years ago at 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 AT&T AT Stadium. And luckily, I brought my credit card. Because I bought the the tickets on the credit card, and I thought I might have to show them an ID oh, yeah. and the credit card. We were leaving, and I was like, "Fuck! I better take that. I'm gonna be a mad son bitch. Get all the way over there and gotta come back and, and get my no credit card." Cash. And I took my credit card and my driver's license, and I had a pocket full of money. And we got up there and ordered Michelle a drink and me a drink. I'd be fifty seven dollars, please, or whatever. You know, it's fucking <laughs> yeah. way over. To, and I pull out the old fucking cash, give him a hundred dollar bill. Oh, sir, we don't take cash. I go, you don't take fucking cash? No, I was like, shit. So I gave him a credit card, which is mind blowing. How's that, How's that yep. legal though? It's, there's no law that says you have to take cash. Mm -hmm. It's just legal tender. It doesn't mean there's it, nothing out there that says no that you have to take cash. It's just legal tender. It is a it's backed by the government that is legally tender. But it's not that there's no law that says I thought that too. I thought well fuck by law you have to take cash. You don't huh. have to. Now when they, the other thing they did that I thought was pretty cool and I'm sure all places do and we had really good seats is you could order off the app and they bring it to you. Oh, that's nice. And you put your credit card in like your Apple Cash or whatever. Yeah, but I mean, it, it could be something as simple as like, I mean, have you seen some of these younger generation kids yeah. try to give you change? Fuck. Oh, fuck yeah. They're have, you, have you seen what like at a grocery store where the register tells you now? Like it doesn't tell you what the change is that is owed. It tells you how many dollar bills, how many fives, how many quarters. <laughs> Are you how serious? Many, I swear. Fucking Breaks it all asses. down for them. Yep. I hate where they're too fucking dumb to count. I hate self checkouts. I, oh, I, I, I won't go to them except Dollar General. Why? Because I'm out there but three minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't like to go to Dollar General unless I've got to go in and grab something or my grandkids want to go. They yeah. fucking think it's the greatest thing to buy. So, yeah, like at Walmart, junk. I always go to the checkout. I, I, I like, don't, yeah, place like that, I want to be checked out. Yep. But at Dollar General, I can be in and out in three minutes because they have three of them in Knox City. And that one lady that's using coupons and shit that takes forever, yeah. I go to the self-checkout, and that's the only place I like it. They've got one that's cash-only self-checkout, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I saw uh, the self-checkout has cost Walmart, like, millions of dollars. In theft? And Yeah. People yeah. Fucking walk away. Oh, yeah, just scan so, everything and put the two expensive things in there. So ain't nobody checking what that shit. I don't give two fucks if Walmart goes broke, so good for them. <laughs> the hope they keep stealing. The conspiracy is, is now you're going to have to have that Walmart Plus to use the self-checkout. Hundred bucks a year. Smart or on like Walmart. That. I I'm not. Freaking, a, I, I don't go. Apps. I don't go to Walmart, so I don't give two shits. But I used to get so pissed at Sam's because they check you out, 
And then the little Oriental lady, yeah. the Hawaiian lady at fucking Abilene that's got the beehive hair. Yeah, would I think she check, retired finally. She finally? Yep. And she would always have to check my receipt. You bet could make me mad. I fucking, I just keep walking. She'd be like, sir, sir, sir. Yeah. It's like, listen, I just checked out about $780 worth of cinnamon and rolls I, and, and shit for my lodge. I haven't broke stride yeah. since yeah. I left there. I said, if yeah. you want to walk with me and read this, you go right ahead. <laughs> sir, sir. I said, I, if you don't trust me, get somebody else to fucking check me out. Yeah. You know, bag my fucking groceries for me. Then yep. you know I'm not stealing shit. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle, quit arguing with her. I said, fuck it, I do this shit every time well, I'm there. Well, now all they do is they scan the receipt, it pulls up two random items, and, and then they, they, they scan them. I haven't been to Sam's, and I don't even have a membership no more. Yeah, it's it's gotten... I don't Because I don't need 57, you know, pieces of Reese's Pieces right. or whatever the fuck yeah. it is. You got to buy bulk everything. But Cheese, yeah. butter. We used to buy stuff right here, someone, because it was it's cheaper than Cisco sometimes. It was convenient. But that just... just Wear my ass out. Oh, well, yeah. Michelle be like, don't get fat. I said, it makes me fucking Going mad. there with two they giant carts me. of shit for a week or two worth of stuff out here and mm-hmm. have to go back again. And It was a trust thing with me. Oh. <laughs> we, we got a friend of ours named Ray Ray, and he went to the, he was at the at Lubbock Airport after 9-11 hunting out here. And um, <laughs> they told him, you know, you got to go through your stuff. We're going to go. They was going through his stuff. He goes, what are you going through for my stuff for? He goes, I don't have a bomb on me or anything. <laughs> Then, then he goes, do I look like I'm a fucking Muslim? I'm not a terrorist. He goes, those people right there on the rags on their head, those people you need to be looking at, not me. <laughs> they had him interrogated his ass in the back room. Oh, shit. There's just some words you don't say in an airport. Bomb's one of them. Yeah. Yeah, you got to avoid that one. Mm. It'll get you every time. How long we'll be on we'll here? start wrapping up. Three, three hours. Three hours. Huh? All right, Eric. <laughs> we'll start wrapping up here. <laughs> We're done. It was, good. it was a good podcast. We need to do this again without five, without being five hours or five years difference. Oh, yeah. I know. And yeah, it was good to see you guys. It's time slipping by too quick. So it happens. Yeah. Our five year birthday is April eighth. Six year birthday, Jeff. How Six. old are you? It was fifty. It was on your fiftieth birthday. This be, no, this is five years of being the podcast. Jeff, it was your 50th 2018, birthday. 2018, and Jeff, God, it is six years. It was your 50th birthday party. <laughs> That's right. I guess you're right. That, that what shit. episode number will this one be? 890. God dang. No, it's not 840? that many. 835, 836, Still, 840. Holy but shit. that's not counting our football ones and bonuses. We've done a 1,000. We've had a 1,000 episodes. That's crazy. Yep. It's been keep, fun. Keep plugging keep, them out. Keep hammering. Time. Yeah, um, we'll do it. <laughs> I guess I'll see you at Easter, maybe. No, we won't see you at Easter. When's Easter? Is that next weekend? Next uh, weekend. T- is it already? What the, the 30th. Fuck? Yeah, 30th. The 30th is Easter. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Right. Yeah. Thanks right. for coming out here. It's been a lot of fun. Three hours went by in a hurry. So. It did. Thanks for having me. It I don't even know what we by. talked about, but it's good either. shit. But, uh, bullshit. Yeah. God bless y'all. <laughs> Thank y'all for listening to us. Uh, peace. If you need any, if you got waterfowl hunts and you want to hunt in November, you better call me now. I mean, we're at that point of almost booking up. So, anyways, call me, 940-658-3172. I do answer the phone, stanfieldhunting.com. God bless you. Peace out. Bye. Love you, bye. Watch Watch for deer. deer. (laughs) Go check out our sponsors. Go check out Pacific Call, Dive Bomb Industries, Boss Shot Shells, MLR Graphics, Dirty Duck Coffee, Shin Gear, Looking Glass Podcast, Lucky Duck, Ducks Unlimited, Double T British Kills, Mallard Bay, Mossberg, Stanford Outfitters, Outfoutdoor Specialties, and Hemp Hill Farms.